unmute. And I believe, Mr. Stephen Croak, that is, uh, I think we're live on the internet. Um, whoop, whoop. I shan't believe it until uh, I've got I've got the I've got the thing up. Um, I can see there's lots of people in the chat, and I would like one of those kind people. I can now see our faces on the internet. If one of those lovely people could be so kind as to tell us um, that we are in fact live on the internet. Um, live on the interweb. And both myself and Steve sound okay. Um, we'll have to balance the audio as normal. Audio good for both. Steve, can you just uh, can you say a few words? Uh, a few words. That's not been funny since 1983. <laughs> you know the weird thing is, I found that hilarious, funny. right? And <laughs> and Anna says it all the time. Why do you, why are you the only one laughing at your jokes? And I'm like, because I'm hilarious. Because <laughs> they're funny jokes. They're funny, funny jokes. Um, so uh, I can see b before you started speaking, I can see that we've got some um, people saying the sound of video good. So that is wonderful, wonderful news. Uh, I've just seen yeah. Gary George saying, you are indeed both live and audible. What a time to be alive, my friend. So, Gary uh, George, I love that name, Gary George. He sounds like an old school East End gangster. <laughs> there you go, Gary. What do you think? All right, Gary. Uh, sure. Yeah, why not? <laughs> uh, so, hello. Good. Uh, welcome indeed to Battle Streams in Middle Earth. That's not yet. That hasn't come out yet. This is, of course, our, uh, I'd say, bi-weekly, three-weekly, who, who knows. Uh, but Can our, you pull our, that face? Yeah, yeah. Well, more than that. Don't give away all our good material. Um, mm. It is our um, our regular streams where we, we jo join together um, every couple of weeks, every few weeks, and we take a look at this, dear lady, the DXD part where battle games in Villa. <laughs> but we didn't just want to call it that. Because well, that's no name for a YouTube channel. So what we actually did was we took the word games and we swapped it for the word streams, which a lot of people don't realise. Um, yeah. But yeah, so um, we here on Battle Streams in Middle Earth. Oh, oh, hang on, hang on sorry, apologies. Here on Battle Streams in Middle Earth. Oh. Mm. Oh. Mm. 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 The whole point. Look okay, though. It looks like it's been in a while. Look. <laughs> the whole point of the channel was to indeed help you. Is to. The backlog. Yeah, the backlog. So we set this channel up um, four years ago um, to to help us paint for the fun of for the purely for the fun of the hobby to have a uh, to have an enjoyable few hours um, with our with our, well, frankly, with each other to begin with. But then other people started watching. We would hang out, yeah. hang out, and we would just paint together to help us um, clear those backlogs. And the way we do that is we work through this wonderful um, magazine. And um, we look for an issue um, in every episode and we um, see what was going on, what was in it, what the scenery guys were like, what the painting guys were like and so on and so forth. And then we paint the models that came with it. Not because we need them for an army. No. Just for the love of it. We dig them out of the backlogs and we paint them purely for the love of it. Oh, so Stephen Crow, assuming this yeah. sounds like a great activity, how can the viewers get involved? Oh, keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> oh no oh no keep talking he's out keep of practice talking. so as i said i will tell you how you can get involved like always um, but not yet in five minutes <laughs> soon soon <laughs> i'll tell you how you get involved so what we uh what we're going to do is tonight um it's coming up to nine o'clock now we're going to be here until about midnight or so and um, we we want to see whatever it is you're working on, whatever it is you're painting. And me, myself and Steve will also show you any form of drinks or snacks we have. And we want to see that as well. So we want to see the models you're painting and we want to see um, the drinks and snacks. And we're going to have a thread that is set up um, already. And Steve will direct you to that soon. Um, and what you do is you take a little photo of whatever it is you're working on and you pop it in that thread. And then um, and later in the thread, it's almost like the last thing we do, we will go through the thread and see what everyone's up to. But as if that wasn't an incentive enough, if, if the idea of just painting some stuff for fun wasn't incentive enough, we also want to try and um, theme uh, your your painting around the issue of the week. And that time, this time, uh, so what we do is we paint the models that came with the issue. And... Do you want to have a punt at what came with this issue, Steve? Uh, Haradrim? It was indeed the plastic Haradrim Warrior Sprue. Mm. Mm. Um, which is, which is, no which is I can't hear that. 
Can you hear me? No. Is there no is there no clapping for either side? Wonderful. No. But it I looks pre- like a very sarcastic laugh. But they will be able to hear my clapping. Yeah. Such is the complexities of streaming via Zoom. <laughs> mm. And so, um, what we want you to do is paint Harad Warriors because they came with this issue. So, dig out some Harad Warriors, all one, just one, and do a bit of work on it. And if you do that and you take a photo of it and you put a picture in the thread, then you will be in a, in with um, a chance of winning. Oh my yes, winning. Here we go. Seamless. Mm. How's that? Beautiful. Wonderful. Uh, you can't win these. No, no, no. These are our purple patron dice. But what you can win is this, dear lady. Oh, is that the hey. tray? Is that the tray? Hey. That's how hot it is. These are dice that will not be contained. Mm. Oh, boom, boom, boom. Elven Blade won that roll off. Uh, this is a black Battle Streams in Middle Earth dice. <laughs> Look at that bad boy. Mmm. Yep. Beautiful, tasty. Only way to get your hands on one of these um, is to come around my house and pick one up or yep. to uh, win the dice roll off. Yep. Oh, look and, at that. It's and to win, to win it, it's what good. they have to do is go in that uh, the whip thread, which has been up for about three days <laughs> on the Great British Hobbit League, um, and post a picture of what they're working on. And if they are indeed on theme and posting and painting something Harad themed, well, the, the Harad Sprue, Steve. Harad Sprue. Has yeah. it got to be the Harad Sprue? Yes. Okay. Harad Sprue. Um, it's been that long since we had a discussion. Well, exactly. It. Um, it, then they will be entered into the draw to win said black battle streams so in the middle of someone Earth. who works nice. on a Harad Warrior tonight will win okay. that dice. Um, and it only yeah. says work, so you don't have to finish it. If you if you clip him off and you clean him up and you assemble him, that's helping chip away at that black dog. That's that's helping to clear the backlog. That's all it, all that you're required to do. And Steve, it's definitely that plastic sprue because this is a monumentous moment in battle streams in Middle Earth history. Um, do you know why? Do you remember why? Um, sprue yeah, wise, took, it was the last new sprue. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're on issue seventy. Believe it, issue 70 it's of 91. Um, that close. So close you can almost touch it. Release your inhibitions. Paint the mm. Harad Warriors. Um, and it is the last time, issue 70 is the last time we get a new sprue. Mm. So after this, I think there are still a couple of sprues. I think we get like maybe another sprue of Mordor Orcs, but... The Harad sprue is the last new sprue. And after that, it's all repeats. Obviously, we get some more Metal Warriors. But yeah. um, it's it's the end of an era. And I, th- I think we worked out a while back. Didn't we work out that we did the Warg Riders, which are quite new. And before yeah. that, it was t- back to like issue 29 or something for the Siege Troops. But yeah, yeah. Harad Warriors in issue 70, the last plastic sprue that ever came with the magazine. So um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a touch of melancholy in the air, I feel. Mm. Um, and I'm doing some live maths, Steve. Mm. As if that wasn't enough. <laughs> I, I think. You alright? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing live maps, <laughs> so it's tricky. Th- alright, I'm just going to say, I think we're three quarters of the way through. I've just gone big. Out, uh, I think. Thereabouts. Because there's 94. Oh, God, I'm tired, man. There's 94 issues in total, including the specials, and we've done 72 because we've done two of the specials. I think awesome. that's I think that's seventy five percent. I think we've passed it. They they're going to work it out before we do. It must be like twenty four ish. What's forty seven? <laughs> no, what am I about? Ignore. <laughs> it must it, it'd be twenty three. So I want to say. It'd be I mean, nine. we both literally have. Calculus I think, mate. Right. Do you know what? Maybe we've even passed it. We might have already celebrated this. Maybe it was seventy <laughs> issues. The more I think about it, the more I think it would be 70, because it would be 23, maybe it'd have to, no, I am right, I am right, because it would have to be 24, so it'd have to be 24, right, so 4 times 24 is 96, that's right, yeah? Yeah. So for it to be, it's your classic, it's a classic 25% thing, so for it to be more than that, it would have to, yeah. more, like exceeding 75%, it'd have to be 24 yeah. times 3, which is oh. 72, 70 plus the two specials. Yeah. Um, so, Steve, we're we're seventy five percent of the way through the series tonight. Three quarters of the way we, through it. We we can hand on heart 
I know we always said, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll see it through, we'll see it through. I don't think anyone, anyone has seen this. Well, I mean, tonight is this. I, I thought we'd get to 2024, <laughs> mate. Yeah, like, you know, last time I thought we'd get to 2020 this time. This yeah, very, very, and, and practically 2019, because it was, it was January 2020, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, chip away, chip away. But yeah, so a remarkable night for um, celebration. Another milestone passed on, in the battle streams journey, but we're seventy five percent of the way through the story, and we've done. I think we've done these little inadvertent things for like thirty three percent. You know, twenty five percent, thirty three percent, fifty percent, sixty six percent, and seventy five percent. I don't think we're we've done thirds and quarters. I think that's it, right? I don't think we're doing all. Oh, we're mm. eight ninths of the way through. <laughs> So I think, I think the next one's the biggie. The next one is completed, there are, mate. After tonight, 72, there are 19 issues left, my friend. It's not much. No. It's not it's much. Crazy. And I'm tired. And I'm likely to cry. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Um, that's what we want to um, We want you to help us celebrate the last sprue um, that came with Battle Games of Middle-Earth and the... Um, uh, the the seventy five percent milestone of our journey on Battle Streams of Middle Earth by painting some Harad Warriors, and as we said, one of the, one of you lovely people who's painting some Harad Warriors will win that dice. What a time to yep. be alive, Stephen Crow. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you going to be painting any Harad Warriors? No. I'm not doing any painting tonight. Do you want to say why? I would love to. Are these bad boys. Mm. I'm not up to it. They're just not up to it tonight. Even with my glasses on, I'm struggling. So I, I dread to think now because obviously now what I'm going to say is great. So I'll paint and you'll read. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. That works. I've, I've, I'm gonna. I've, I've not read this yet. <laughs> I can't believe it. Um. Yeah. I mean, I'm all meant like not done any prep. I forgot yeah. how Zoom works. <laughs> um. I forgot to do the whip thread. Yeah, it's manic. I'm all we, we planned, like, when did we plan this? It was it was last week. We said yeah, 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 Monday, Monday. Let's, let's do it Monday. Down, yeah. But do you remember? But do you remember me in previous very similar conversations saying Mondays are terrible for me? Yeah, we normally do Tuesdays, don't we? Tuesdays yeah. been our week night that we've settled on. This is how. This is gone. No, well, to be honest, man, if you want to, if you're if you're going to do all the reading, you're going to do the comments. Then I'll just paint for a while. We'll have a great night. I always do all the comments. I always do it. Mate. What normally happens is you do the first hour of comments and then you say, nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much that's pretty much how we're going to do it. That's, that's what's going to happen. Um, I can't help it. I can't see, mate. I can't help it. Blame God. That's all I'll say. You gave me these. Uh, I mean, you could always get them on your phone, I suppose, couldn't you? That would be, you know, why squint at your screen? I can't see this massive screen in front of me. I'm not uh, much <laughs> looking at it. So there we go. Uh, Steve's not painting anything tonight, so no, no news on the Gundabad Ogres. And myself... Um, I, I debated him, you know, in my, um, my, I track my models. March mm. has got 12 Harad warriors. I've got, I've got a sprue of them. I've got two sprues, one from a box and one from the Mumut. None of them have been touched. And they're in my March spreadsheet as with a kind of question mark. I was like, am I going to paint these? And I, mm. I really, really, really wanted to. And yeah. I, I've, I've come down with a hard, sensible life. No today where I was like, I'm not getting overly stressed out about it. the whole point of this is fun and clearing your ho clearing our hobby backlog and all that. And I was really tempted to paint one, but I was like, I'm not going to do them. I, I just don't, I can't, I can't fit them in. I've got too many other things on, so I can't fit them in. So what does that mean on battle streams, Steve? What do I do? Um, you paint someone else? Yeah. What? <laughs> uh, what? Oh, you're asking me what you're painting? Yeah. What do I paint when I can't paint on theme? Um, I serve. Yeah, my gondola stuff. So I have four plastic ranges. Yeah. Um, so these are, this is the army that I've only painted um, on the stream over the last four years. Yeah. And I painted eight of these up for the GT on the stream about this time last year, I think. Um, and there were four left from a Spirit 12, so I'm working on the other four. So whilst I am not joining people in Haradland... I am mm. doing something very, very beast army. I'm painting up four plastic ranges that I really don't want purely for the love of the hobby. Nice, nice. Should we should we do snacks? Absolutely. So um I'll go first. Mm -hmm. 
as it'll be short and sweet. I'm uh, very, very underprepared, um, as has been my life the last few weeks. Um, I've got a cup of tea in a very faded mm. dishwasher, non-dishwasher safe. Uh, <laughs> Have you written that? I've just seen that up close. Have you? Is, is that written on? Well, oh, I did it. I, I wanted it, to create. You no, know clear. It looks like you. So scribbled. when it says clear, when yeah. it says clear, I've kind of cleared it. That honestly looks like you had scribbled the word clear in handwriting in <laughs> Sharpie <laughs> above it. I'm writing that. I'm not bad. <laughs> uh, so I've got my cup of tea. Um, I scoured the cupboards and don't tell anyone, mm-hmm. especially oh, I my don't. wife. I stole this. Oh, nice! What a find! <laughs> why is it? Why is it thin? What is that? Because it's out of a multi pack. There was a pack of four, um, and they were hidden behind the plates, and I found them behind the one. plates. Um, and then in... no, wait, 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 wait! I want to go. They were hidden behind plates. Yeah, yeah, she hid them. Yeah. To be fair, I don't think she hid them from me. I think she hid them from the kids. So in your crockery cupboard, you've got hidden snacks. Oh no! So the our snack our snack shelf is the bottom shelf of the cupboard where all our plates and stuff is. Right. Okay. But she, yeah, yeah. she so, so she like uplifted those. She put it on the second shelf behind. That's, Clever. That's not going to stop Steve. No, no. no chance. I'm taller than the kids. I can reach that shelf. I'm no, a cheeky. Um, you just reach around, don't you? <laughs> good to be found um and then the rarely seen uh battle streams in middle earth tankard very nice very nice has some half flat coca-cola in it that I found in the fridge um <laughs> sounds delightful <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, yeah, so, i wasn't i wasn't prepared but i'm sorted what about yourself uh so uh a bit better than you, I think. I, I have my tea as standard. Mm. I actually have a squash on the go. Oh, squash, yeah. And I did. I have not even in the summertime. Not in Wilburton, it's not even started yet. Yeah. <laughs> India Wells, though, so it's going all right. Um, I, I, do te- I do treat myself to a beer on a stream night. I, um, mm. I do consider it a moment of celebration. And Steve. Um, yeah. I, I won't ask you to guess because I think they're pretty obscure, but I, I would like you to guess the source. I've got some chocolate. Okay. And I was given it oh. at the Warhammer World GT. The GT? Yeah. And it's a regular chocolate giver. Well, I'm going to go one or two people. I'm, one of, I'm, going, to go, I'm going to go left field because mm-hmm. and, and I'm, I'm going to put a caveat on it that I could be wrong because he might not have even attended. Steve, I don't think you should go left field. Because <laughs> I think I know you're left field. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to go left field. Go right I'm field. Gonna go, go I'm right going to make field. it exciting. I'm no, go make right it field. Exciting. I'm going to assume Frederick travelled. Oh, I told you you shouldn't have gone left field. It's not no, Frederick. There's one or two people. Right, right, so, yeah. Go on, I'll let you. No, go on, who is it? No, no, no. I've, I've ruined it for. Well, our patron, Julian Hammond, famously gives us chocolate. I like yeah. to keep it and eat it. Steve likes to leave it on the table and ignore it. Once. But... It happened once. But, Your Honour. But now you won't go to any events. <laughs> so. Um, so Julian Ammon, legends amongst B-Simers. Um, the wonderful thing is, genuinely, he does it, he does it I'm going to say, every event. And, he finds I ne- obscure flavoured yeah, yeah. But I, normal I chocolate. Never, I still never expect yeah. it. And so he just rocked up at my table the GT with a little bag of chocolate. I was like, what an absolute legend. So the first thing he gave me was a dairy milk mini egg bar. That's what I said, Steve. Sweet. Which is why I ate it immediately. <laughs> That's gone. <laughs> Didn't have a hope. Like, I, I thought that, I, I don't think I'd had that. So dairy milk chocolate with bits of mini I think egg. I've seen them. Yeah. I think I've seen them before. So I had that. Gone, long gone, so good, so good. But I, I, I literally opened that on the sofa. It was one, you know, one of the bars like that. Yeah. yeah. I opened it on the sofa to have a Nailed few it. cubes of, and I think I did it in a night. And I was like just sobbing my way through it, like it's meant to be for the stream. <laughs> but then once it was open, I was like, the stream's in three weeks. It hasn't got a hope. Mm. Hasn't got a hope. But then I stayed strong. And he also brought some matchmakers. 
Mm. Honeycomb Which, matchmakers. It's not even Christmas. Yeah, not necessarily my cup of tea, if I'm honest, but a lovely gift. Mm. Mm. I can't hear anything in that. Yeah, that ain't Zoom. That's either empty or it's Zoom. Not Zoom <laughs> but whilst I've cracked into some of them, they have survived. Oh. So, Julian, thank you very much. So, we have Honeycomb matchmakers. Have you had the pleasure? No, no. I'm a mint matchmaker, man, me. So, is it still dark chocolate or is it light chocolate? No, it's milk. Is it milk? milk. It's milk chocolate. I think it's milk. Milk. Yeah. No, I don't like honeycomb. I don't like um, crunchy. Mm. But, A, it's a gift. And B, it's much, much... The pieces are tinier. It's more like yeah. eating popping candy or something. Yeah. Than like biting through the horrible, scratchy bar of a crunchy. Mm. That's good. And not only that... No. No what? No. What, though? It's not for me, that. What, Bourneville? Bourneville. Rum. No, you can say and... it. Now this, I'm mega because I talk about rum and raisin. Right, we're talking about the ice cream. I'm mega excited yeah. about that, and I haven't gone into this. So tonight's the night, my friend. Nah. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you've got that. Now. <laughs> Style it out. I'm glad I haven't got any free chocolate. <laughs> Rubbish. But of course, if you yeah. went, Steve, you'd have mm. chocolate catered for your needs. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that is good. No, it's not. Mm. We're going to taste some rum. It's dark chocolate for a start. Bourneville is like too... It's too... That's really nice. Julian, thank you so much, my friend. And just while I remember, who knows what recap we'll get to. Congratulations to Julian on getting second place Mm. for best army at the GT. Some really good uh, hobby on display on the Facebook. Look, everyone's posts who were... I was like... That's like up to notch. We might like, we might come back to it, obviously, but it's worth saying. Phil Bills, Smaug. Yeah. yeah. He Insane. he showed me pictures of that. Definitely, you know, he did the photo shoot for issue fourteen, so that yeah, yeah. that would have been in like May, mm. May last year. He showed me photos of it then, and I think I honestly think he showed me photos of it around December, like a year before of the conversions. And I said then. I remember, it, I'm sure it was like early 2024. So if you haven't seen this, he's he's converted Smaug and put it onto a Lake Town base. Smaug is crawling over Lake Town, breathing fire. And I said to him a year before, I was like, you'll win Best Army with that. Mm. I was like, you can't. Like, even, even at that it's point, insane. even at that it's point, insane. I was like, that's absolutely insane. And mm. I'm so, and he's worked on it for over a year. And I was yeah. so delighted for him. And, I'm not sure how much you looked at it, but it was better than it than you will ever think. You know, he he sculpted front legs for it. Right. He wanted it to have six legs or six limbs. Yeah. yeah. So he sculpted yeah. new new arms for him. Um, he's got the the fire coming out of him. It goes down Smaug's neck with um, lights in it. He's hollowed mm-hmm. out the neck of Smaug, <clears throat> like drilled all the way through that piece. Mm-hmm. Um. And hollowed it out so you can feed the lights through it. Put it on Lake Town, and then even the late the Lake Town was the best Lake Town I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, absolutely it was. incredible. You can um, find pictures of it all over the internet, but it's it was wonderful. And because it had no wall, it had no no back. You could look at it from all four angles. Um, it was yeah. absolutely incredible. Like hands down, you know one of those times where you just see it and it's like I sort of laughed to him as, as as if I could compete with it anyway. But I just said to him, I was like, I'm 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 not even going to bother bringing a display board because. Mm. You'll get nominated and you'll win. <laughs> you know, it's, like, mm. it's like it's it's the only time I think in any of these competitions where I've actually thought it's cut and dry. And yeah, you know, he thankfully got nominated and inevitably he won. But it, I mean, it was absolutely amazing. I was so chuffed for him because he, I think he kind of had a lot of emotional weight in it. You know, it spent a lot yeah. of time doing it and a lot of money yeah. on it. Obviously, and it was stunning. Yeah, it, it, was, it, absolutely it was absolutely stunning. Incredible. It's probably one of the best. I don't know whether to call it a display board, whether to call it a yeah. diorama. Just, just one of the best uh, examples of hobby that yeah. I've seen, yeah. and I don't mean that in just Middle Earth either. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I ever agree. seen yeah. it was class. But to be honest, he 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 
sort of sets the bar and smashes the bar every time I see yeah. the stuff that he does. No, absolutely. He, he's he's always been good at that stuff, but he's he's sort of excelled himself for that one. The, even like the the Lake Town house that he's on has got all the batteries in for the lights, yeah. so you know yeah, that's yeah. all incorporated into the display. And I don't know if you mm. saw, but he, he sculpted like Lake Town is on fire, running mm. around, and he had he had like a Where's Wally checklist of things to find on the Lake Town. Yeah. And outside, outside, but he had like washing lines hanging up, with clothes between the houses. And outside Bard's house, it had all of Gaston's clothes from Beauty and uh, the Beast right. because Luke yeah. Evans played Gaston. And I mean, it was like <clears throat> it was like Chef's Kiss. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to stay with it for ages, just looking at it. It was just incredible. He, he gave it to me at the start. He went, "There you go," and I was like, "I, I don't want to hold this. I can't. <laughs> I can't." Touch. And I was like, "All right, there you go. Very nice. It's like giving someone their baby back." You know, I was like. Please don't trust me with that. It was um it was a phenomenal, phenomenal piece of hobby. Yeah, it was class. If by any weird chance you've not seen it, go on the Great British Hobby League uh, and have a look. Um, ignore what 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 the rumours are online about the Great British Hobby League. It's not <laughs> describe it. <laughs> he, um, I remember him saying like, and he was showing it to me like last January, last February or so. And I remember saying to him, I was like, you're not um. Not bringing that to Throne of Skulls, are you? <laughs> and he was, like, he was like, no, it's for the GT. I was like, perfect, perfect, wonderful, love it, love it, absolutely wonderful. There's, I mean, that was, <clears throat> it was like, it was a Throne of Skulls army, but yeah. it's only 700 points and you need the good and evil. So yeah, like, yeah. you know, I, and I, I suggest, he said like, you know, what would I, how would I bring the Lake Tunnels? I went, if you want to do Seven Stones, as far as we're concerned, I would let you bring, Seven, seven Stones is 800 points. I said, bring Smaug and bring 100 points to Lake Town. Like same yeah. same army, cool with cool with me, man. Um, but yeah. yeah, it was it was a, a wonderful wonderful effort, and he did he did so so well at it, and I was just I was just chuffing. Mm -hmm. It was a very yeah. lovely bloke. Right, well, let's get stuck in. I'm gonna get, jump into the comments then while you uh, wet your brushes, will mm -hmm. he? And um, yeah, we'll see you soon. Uh, it's quite busy for a, a Monday evening. Welcome everybody. Uh, so we've got Frederick uh, says hello there. Joe Holdman's in. Rich Clammer's in. Ginamo's in. He says probably going to be a short one for me. Had to get off for work in seven hours and has to sleep sometime in the middle. Um, Matt Fry's in. Matt Hudson's in. <clears throat> Dublay's in. Uh, Remco Keekstra's in. Warwick Griggs is in. Do, 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 do. Where's the whip thread? Asks. Frederick's up there, mate. YouTube tells me we've got 42 people watching. Thank you all yeah. so much for joining us. Thanks all, mate. Hey all, uh, says Sam. Uh, Hoodie that is, not Paige. Uh, Gary George. Gary George, he's just done a van. <laughs> You're going to make it happen, aren't you? You're going to make it happen. <laughs> he says good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning, Gary George. Oh, Gary, George, Gary in, George in the, the, sun, the sun shining... Utopia of Australia, is that? Oh. Joel Monroe's in. Uh, Morgan Morris is in. Um, Frederick says, I'm excited for Haradi Whip Thread. Uh, Remco Keister says, let's give him a few more minutes, right? At least three, says Chill. Uh, will we late? Will we late? The um, hold screen went live exactly 8.37. Oh, we're not late then. Uh, evening, lads. 32 Harad ready for some painting, says Scott Newman. Oh, I'd love man. to hear it. Uh, so Brush says good evening everyone how you doing pal uh, Frederick says to Mr Remco Keekstra two more mins to go on the B-side style Bruce Clamour says streamers ready little, little uh, nod to Gladiators have you been watching it Gladiators yeah I've not I've not watched I really it. like Flavor I've not watched it. I've watched zero minutes the kids have been watching it she's just the best Gladiator Steve is she you remember how Jet was the best gladiator? Mm, Sabre's yeah, yeah. the best gladiator. <laughs> and Diamond's uh, good too, but I'm scared. <laughs> She'd break me in half and I'd be fine with it. Was that actually Frederick's, a terrible thing? That Frederick's, was... Frederick's not happy, mate. About what? Piano House. Oh, I thought you meant about gladiators. Oh, the new no, gladiators, no. I think, is absolutely great. It, it's really, really recaptured the joy of, of classic radio. I'll have to it's, watch it's it. I've just, I've just not had the time. Been, uh, Saturday, Saturday nights, so I'm working out. So. And there was one, there's a guy here called Comet, who I I thought she was very talented. 
and we were like, I, I don't know where's Comet. I haven't heard any Comet. And um, she she fell, and she's been injured. And she's out of it. She, the wording mm. on it is so. <laughs> right? It says she fell from a thirty foot wall, but it never says the wall. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, never, it's like it's probably. Was it the wall? And it's really weird that it says she fell from this undetermined 30-foot wall whilst filming She might have been practising in her back garden or something. No, it was when it was being filmed. Mm. And um, she, she dropped and shattered her feet. Um, so this poor girl, um, that's why she... Where, she, does, where does blame? There's a claim. Where do? But she, it's got quite a happy ending, I think. They, you know, where she, they looked after her and she... It's like the comeback's better than the setback or something. So she might be back. But yeah, um, that's why Comet disappears from the show because she got um, horribly injured. Um, which is sad. This is a happy ending. But the rest, I mean, the rest of it is, is so good. They're, like, Jewel is amazing. There's a guy called Giant who's like, you know, 12 foot 10 or something and massive and mm. just smacks them off the podiums and the, the eliminators. Is it, is it, is it, is, have, is, have they still got the, the Jewel? That's talking about Jewel. That's what I mean. That's where the yeah, massive yeah. guy goes. I used, to, I, used to, I used to watch it for that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. It's really, really good. I was I was delighted, and Charlotte loves it now. It's weird seeing that sort of thing passed on to the next generation. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good Saturday night TV, isn't it? Um, right on time. Got to love it. Says Remco. Ashley Fisher. Good evening, B Simers. Um, classic B Simers says Frederick Rich Clammer music, and he does this emoji. Uh, Ashley Fisher. Question: How long would you leave plastic glue before spraying? I very rarely use plastic glue. Do you use plastic glue, David? Yeah, I, I mean, for me, I, I, it'd always be the day before. But that's for, I tend to assemble stuff the day before I spray it just to be clean. Mm. I, I don't. I, don't, I think plastic glue dries pretty fast. To be honest, like you'd be alright after an hour or something. But I'd, yeah. um, I'd, I'd, I'd just leave it twenty four hours for any type of glue, really, just to, just in case. Yeah. It doesn't really uh, matter when you if you're spraying it anyway. I think it's like spraying it. Do you know what spray paint is? It's basically glue. It basically like, holds everything together. If I was, <laughs> if I was hand undercoating, I wouldn't like super glue something and then jump into hand undercoating it. But with that, you can basically, I, I reckon, spray paint is secretly flying glue. So, I just... don't think it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is good advice. <laughs> Leave just... it twenty four hours, actually. Glue them together. At least and... an hour. At least an hour. Glue them together and spray it. Here is what I would say, actually. I would say, leave it an hour. And if, if you if you can uh, run a brush past it and it's not soft, spray away. Sounds like you're a coward. The um, official say. guidance from Games Workshop's plastic glue is read carefully. Other cautions on packaging. There are no other cautions on the packaging. <laughs> 16 plus. Who was it, Frederick? Uh, Ashley Fisher. Ashley Fisher. He's 16, isn't he? I think just I hope, about. I hope so. I've had him in my house. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's no other ones. It's flammable and it's loud. Mm. Put a match next to it. If it lights, it's not set. <laughs> yeah, I gave him bad advice. Right? <laughs> I have to give it a nice big smell before you do it. So. Um, everyone's letting us know the audio is good. Uh, Sam says, hey, I was listening to that. Uh, Sound of video is good. Uh, Frederick's asking, are your places swapped again? Looking at the YouTubes, we are. I'm on your side, you're on my side. I mean, I think I think that's just how my Zoom setup is. As long as I'm hosting, yeah. I think we might be swapped. Should we update them on the uh, internet gate in Altrincham? You, you should, do, you should, yeah. I think so, because I mean, I've been right. hosting for the last few, haven't I? So yeah, go on, tell, yeah. tell them your ongoing talk, story. Talk, Probably talk, don't, talk. I've, I've heard every excuse the that you told song. me about I've heard every excuse under the sun, Anna. I've, I've, I've heard it all. And I, I, I had the best one today. Give us 10 more days. It's been six months, mate. Give us 10 more days, they said. And then if you still got a problem, message us back. That was basically the guy saying, I haven't got time for this. <laughs> and next time you it was come quite up, come late through. in the day, right? Did you ring it about 10 yeah, past yeah, five? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was about five, about four or five o'clock. <laughs> so, Tell honestly, the guy mate, just you've got, you've got five minutes of my time and then... <laughs> <laughs> you had me taking pictures of the the router where the wires were for an hour, and then he just said, "We'll give it ten more days. If it's still there, you still got a problem. Get back in touch." I said, "I don't have to go through all this again, do I?" No, no, I'm going to save the chat. Yeah, of course you are, mate, because you are. 
Of course you had no clue about the chat that I had right. two weeks ago with your colleague. Of course you are. Of course you are. Of course you are. We started a battle company. So, yeah. Um, I, did, I did tell a little flip, fib, though. I, I basically said, look, this is, you know, it's not acceptable. Um, I need to stream to do with my job. That's what I said. <laughs> did you? Um, and I was, I was hoping he wasn't going to say, well, I've just looked into your IP address and um, I didn't know that your job was battle stream in the middle of But if he did say that, I would say, well, actually, yeah, it is my job. Well, which it job? Is. Was a... My job, um, mate. I, I imagine if he was a fan. No, he definitely wasn't. How cool would that be? Definitely. Did definitely I tell you, like, I'm, I'm sure I told you this was years ago that when I got this computer and I had to... Um, you have to, like this is a work computer basically, but I, you know I have it all the time. It's just it's my work laptop or whatever, but it becomes my default laptop. It's a work. It's a it's a work yeah. laptop. Um, that but it's it's administered by work essentially, so I don't have the admin password on it. And do you remember that I had to get permission yeah, yeah, yeah. for Zoom to screen share, <laughs> and on that I had to, I had to go into them and I was like I, I need I just need you to click set, and they were like why. And they were, it was like, it's so that Zoom can screen share through OBS. And I was like, but you don't need to. We, we can use Teams. I was like, yes, but I need Zoom to screen share through OBS. And I was like, why? Why don't you use for this? I was like, because that's not how we do our streams. And it was like, what streams? I was like, it doesn't matter what streams. Just click in the box, Techie. Don't ask me these questions, yeah. please. And thankfully, please. Techie did. Mm. Uh, Fly Mammal Ruth's in. Waves. Hey, Ruth. How you doing? Uh, Gary George says, you are indeed live and audible. In fact, a few words is in fact a few words, says Frederick. Sweet, says Gary George. Uh, Rich Palmer says, do you know what else is a few words? The whip thread. Mm. Oh, why did you mention the whip thread that's been up all night? Come deep, Rich, come deep. Uh, even everyone says, Mr. Julian Hammond, Mr. Chocolate Man. Uh, oh, I'm glad Dublase he's in to hear his, uh, his praise. Dublase getting a bit... bit Feisty, you know. Is it? Feisty. So what excuse is Steve going to use for the lack of whip thread tonight? Well, you know what he's like at this time of year. I know, he's grumpy, isn't he? He's like the longest anyone's... No, no one's to mentioning all. his name. No one's, no one's interested. Uh, Destro's in, he says, Estonian greetings. How do you, mate? Um, it's in the whip thread box behind him. <laughs> I did I did genuinely forget. Mr. Calman Steals Right is in. He says, good what? evening, guys. How are you doing? Calman Steals Right. Uh, second... I, love it. I, love it. I love it when Calman's in. Third place, best army at the GT with his superb yeah, last alliance display. Well done, sir. Uh, yes, that was awesome. I did see it. Looked great. It's really nice. Amazing. And he's, again, he's been working on that for six months, nine months or something, gradually building up to it. And he's kind of brought the same army or variations on the army to a bunch of tournaments and all building up to the GT. It's been it's been really, really mega. Love it. Yeah. Uh, James Wilson, evening everyone. How are you doing, James? Uh, I'm still very jealous of your Gosney Dome. And I, uh, I've got my eye on the new, the new, I like the sleek, stealthy black one that they brought out, but I think it's limited edition. A little bit out of my price range at the minute. Is Gosney Dome one of the Disney parks? Or? No, it's a, it's a pizza oven, my friend. Pizza oven. Yeah. Well, I actually saw beautiful. a post about beautiful about bit of kit. Beautiful. 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 I just didn't know that they had such exciting names. Yeah. Oh, you should, mate. Once you're in, you're in. <laughs> so that's how they get you. The names. Is it? Is it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jakey says, evening all. Uh, not on theme tonight. Instead, I'm starting a test model for my Dale army. Oh, thoughts and prayers, my friend. Mm. That will look beautiful, but they are horrific. <laughs> so, um, last brew party popper, as swords and brushes, uh, one that works. Could be tempted. Could be. Uh, Duble says, "Don't trust Steve's masks." It wasn't even me doing masks. What's up with Duble tonight? What's with the anti-Steve propaganda? We were both struggling with maths, and famously, your maths has been awful. Yeah, my maths is not good. Well, maths—that's how I am. My maths is good. It's just. Not good tonight. Uh, Battle Mass Middle Earth. Uh, it's the Tulsa Brushes. Battle Mass Middle Earth. Battle Mass Middle Earth. Oh, Battle see, Ma oh, I see. Oh, I see. Battle isn't Mass Mass fun, Mass. says Teenage Dirt. Mass is fun. Ashley Fisher's popped up. Uh, 94, 75% equals 70.5. So 71 issues passes 75. We didn't say whether it was rounding up or rounding down, though, Ashley, to be fair. Uh, it's like Steve doesn't even go here. Go where? Says Jill. 
Was mm. it because you for, maybe maybe you forgot something, and so it's like I forget a lot of stuff. To be fair, it might be something like that. Uh, <sighs> oh, he's saying sixty nine was yeah sixty nine is seventy five percent, and we did it last time. But isn't that of ninety? That's of ninety one, isn't it? It's not. It's not of ninety four. The 69, 69, 69 would be sixty nine is quite easy. That's thirty three, right? So then yeah, I'm not you have... this again. my brain's not like there. My brain's not there. For no, sorry, too 20, much maths, 20. man. We've had we've had the maths segment. Ten minutes are going to give me a date then. Um, Ian White, else did I do, mate? He says pretty confident tonight's stream will be better than last night's. What was last night's? Did you do a cooking stream? No. Was there, a, was there another Middle Earth themed satire stream? I don't know. Last night's stream. That feels like it's. Or did we give a wrong date? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. In the chat, he thought it was last night. That's what it is. Oh, was that Ian? Right. Okay, okay, okay. Was that Ian? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sam Earnshaw says, not sure if you are aware, but Damien's Hobby Vlog number 34 has a copyright strike. Yeah. I did notice that. What was that for? Uh, it's, it's nonsense. I just haven't had time to chase it, right? You know, at the start of the vlogs, it goes mm. as Battle Streams yeah. Middle Earth comes out, right? Um, yeah. It's for that, and it is. I don't, I don't mind telling people this. Um, let's have a look. It is the seminal hit um, K Guy and Kill Don't I Kill by Hiroyuki Sawano. Of the Sony Music Entertainment Group, it's a Japanese artist. Yeah, and it's it's for that bit, and and what that works because we pay a subscription to Epidemic Sound to use their sound library, and have yeah. used that sound clip. Yeah, and do you know what I reckon's happened? I reckon this what? this I killed you kill bloke has nicked it and put it in his song, but then released it, and I'm getting done. Uh -huh. For that, so it's it's that clip. It's not like that time you played Little Mix and we got banned in Chad. Um, and it's happened twice. Um, but but one of them I didn't care about because let me um, let me let me search for this block because I'll show you. Uh, God knows why. There we go. My hobby vlog number twenty seven is blocked for exactly the same reasons, but only in one territory. And that is loading uh, blocked in some territories. It doesn't actually say where. Um, I thought it said on on the website on the email somewhere. But it was it was. I get I, I get stuff blocked all the time on Instagram, like some, and I don't know why, and it's always. Uh... In Russia. Yeah, it was somewhere that didn't matter, so I ignored it. That's a hobby vlog twenty seven. All the others, all of them whom have the same clip, are fine. And then this one has now been blocked globally. And I'm like, oh, for God's sake. Like, So I, I don't know quite why, but I presume I'll be able to push back. But I just haven't got the time. Or the inclination. Yeah. So, well, I've got the inclination because I actually got a lot of traction on that one. It was my Mordor Orcs one. And lots of people mm. put comments on it, which I haven't started replying to because I can only presume you won't get notifications about them because you can't see the video. So I will try. Thank you for pointing out. I will try and I will try and sort it out um, when I get a spare minute. But it's quite annoying. Yeah. And presumably. And, and uh, YouTube is notoriously hard to deal with. Yeah, yeah. They have they have no people. No. Um, uh, it's kind of like talk talk. <laughs> a holes. Maybe it's the same company. Uh, Jill Monroe says, "Better to ask forgiveness as always, Steve." I think that's about the chocolate. True, but. Each uh, I might just blame it on the kids. Um, Sam says, was it Steve's chocolate question mark? Did Sam finally give up and just give it to Dean? Oh, I what, think uh, Judy knows me better. So he knows I wouldn't have born with him. Uh, Sean Clarkson, he says, hang on. It said 9pm. Are we early or late? No, I just put the, uh, I put the wrong time. In fact, I didn't put the wrong time. What I did was I just put reuse settings. It must have been 9 o'clock last time. That is putting the wrong time. Yeah, but, <laughs> no, you know no, tried, that's not. I, I didn't put the wrong time. I just, I just put the old time, which was a different time and wrong. <laughs> I was just being lazy. 
Um, even all, hope you're all well. How's the new career going, Steve? As Stephen Ryan, uh, it's going very well, buddy. Thank you very much. Really enjoying it. Well, Steve, do you want? Um, um, I think that's a decent bit of catch up because you you've had development since our last stream. Yeah, well, we spoke about it. we spoke about it in the last stream, didn't we? I don't think I, my memory wasn't that you spoke about this bit. You were you you were doing your your last new job, but I don't yeah. think you'd got the new job. Yeah, so, yeah, I can't remember what we spoke about last time. Basically, um, I was, I've been doing, so I've been dipping my toe into the culinary world, working as a chef, um, like very, very part-time alongside my normal career, my, my normal business. Um, and weird, kind of like, the way it's all happening, is too, I'd, I'd be here for hours explaining the way it's all kind of panned out it's, it's a, it's, a, it's a long-winded, very odd, makes no sense story. But the long and short of it is, uh, I got offered a position to run a kitchen, uh, and it's a barbecue kitchen. It's a barbecue-themed kitchen, so it's barbecue food, it's smoking food, it's cooking on live fire. It's right on my street. It's what I do anyway, at home, uh, and it was, it was that random of an opportunity and it just aligned with everything that i love about cooking that i couldn't say no so literally my business my old my old jobs i've not took on any more work there i've got a couple of little things that i need to do here or there but yeah basically now i'm a full-time chef long story short it's mad isn't it it is mad beyond me. mad i think it was mad last time when we talked about it <laughs> When you were just working as a chef under someone else. Now you're yeah. running a kitchen. Yeah. Writing two, menus. Two months source, after sourcing food, the first time sourcing, you worked in a kitchen. Mental, mate. Right? It is mental. stupid, Stephen. Is what I, it know, is. I know. Do you know, do you know what the bad thing is about it? I've never really thought, because, of, because, because, of, because I've been in it, in it, involved in it all happening and been like so busy. I still am so busy because I'm kind of, Look at them over the worst of it, but this is still like a transitional period, so there's a lot of I'm, I'm like coming and going left, right, and centre. But it was only you've mentioned it before, but I was talking to another pal of mine the other day, and he he was like, he was like kind of like he was like it's it's crazy, <laughs> and I was like I know it's mental. He's like no, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, and, and he's like, I don't mean that in a uh, a bad way. I mean it in a good way. Like I, yeah. I, he was saying, like I really admire what you've done. Like you've you've made it happen. You've gone out and you've got that experience, and you've you've taught yourself this, and you've put yourself out there. And yeah, that's all true, except for the bit where you I was got like, the yeah, experience. I've not really thought about it. You, didn't, you didn't do the bit where you got the experience. You wandered into <laughs> you wandered into a kitchen. Where, Can I work here a bit? And they went, yeah, sure, why not? And then you went, cool. And then someone else got, oh, do you want to run mine? And you went, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> what? Well, they say, don't you, like, you fake it till you make it kind of thing. Um, yeah, well, I think but gonna, yeah, it's great. It's I mental, mate. You're going to fake it's, it for a bit longer. It's, ins it's insane. But I suppose it, it's, the, it's the only way that you're going to learn, right? Under pressure, jumping in at the deep end. I don't think you're jumping great. in the at the deep the end. The I feedback think... I've had off the food has been... You're not jumping in at the deep end. You're jumping in in the Olympic final of the race. Right. <laughs> 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 and that's not a phrase, my friend. <laughs> but, the, but, the, but, yeah, but... So, but this is the thing. I, I've said it to you before, because somebody said it to me when I, when I started to work at the restaurant in Knutsford. Um, they kept saying to me, because, because I'd had so little experience in a professional kitchen. They were kind of like warning me. They were like, oh, you know, pressure. You know, it can be this, yeah, it can yeah, be that. Yeah. It can get really, that thingy in a kitchen. And but a few days in, and I was like, you lads have never worked in a building site. <laughs> you, you lads have never had customers ringing you at 11 o'clock at night, changing what they've ordered off you at the 11th hour when you've already ordered all the gear. You know, it's like a twenty grand contract. Yeah. Like, this is nothing. This is food. No one, no one's, no one's dying. 
Uh, well, it depends how you cook it. <laughs> people want food, you feed them. Like, as long as you take a little bit of pride in what you're doing. It's, uh, I'm not going to use the word easy. Like, like It's not easy. It's hard work. But, yeah, I mean, I just, I just really enjoyed it. I just think, really it's, it. I, I think it's so amazing. And, I, and I've said this to you. Apologies if I've said this on the stream about the last time you did it for the other kitchen. But the thing, it reminds me, and for God knows why it's this show that I keep coming back to, but it reminds me of Desperate Housewives. And in that, both, it, it starts off, as my memory shows, where all, all the women are housewives. And then they've been looking after the kids and that's where the intrigue starts. And the men are off doing their jobs and, and earning the money and all that. And then the women, basically, as they become developers characters, they go, well, now most of them will go, I'm going to go and have a career or go back to work or whatever. And they go back mm -hmm. and they do their dream job. Yeah, and then yeah. the men have a similar kind of midlife crisis. Go, I don't want to do this boring job anymore. I always want, I want to open a restaurant. I want to chase my dream. And you watch it going, yeah, but that never happened. It would never, <laughs> ever happen because you can't, you can't just stop and chase your dream because you've got a mortgage to pay. You, you can't just do it. And you've done it. You're doing the thing that if I watched on TV, I'd be like, that's impossible. He's a glazer. He can't, he can't be running a kitchen three months after his first shift in a kitchen. That's preposterous. Do you know, it's, it's, it is preposterous. It's absolutely stupid. Like, but, but you know, wonderful. And it's like, it's, it is mental. It's crazy. It's crazy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't believe it. Like, if I didn't know I, I'm, you. I'm a huge, <laughs> like, huge believer in things happening for a reason. And it was like, when when I got off when I got offered this job, this position, running that kitchen and coming in and, like, showing the other people how, how, how to smoke meats and how it all works and the techniques and the things you've got to do and it my my initial like gut reaction was no don't be stupid like that's 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 out of my reach i can't do that yeah. i can't do that and then the more i thought about it i was thinking i can do that <laughs> i pissed that <laughs> have you got have you got a, have you got a mezzalina and then, and then, and and the beauty of it is, the thing that that was sort of the the doubt for me not to, to accept the job was the fact that it's in Stoke, which is a different city, a different town. Right. Weirdly enough, it's where uh, Matt Generation Shift lives. Lovely. Um, that was that was the negative. That flipped on its head because my my eldest. Um, my son, Cole, he's at university in Stoke. So then the, the negative became a positive because it's like, well, I won't just see him now when he comes back to Manchester. His his house where he lives is literally an eight minute drive door to door from the restaurant. See that is a, So I was like got a, things are just yeah. things are just aligning here. There's there's some sort of serendipity in that, isn't there? There's, things there's are just aligning here. Um and then it was it was Anna, it was Anna who pushed me really. She was like, What have you got to lose? You might never get offered this again of course you won't you'll always it's regret stupid. it of course you won't be offered you'll, it again you'll, you'll always regret it if you don't do it um so yeah so i took it you found your one drunk idiot with a restaurant like you're never going to find another one you know? <laughs> no it's, it's i mean it's amazing mate so um it's crazy mate it's so crazy. you're you're now doing that have you started is that right yeah, yeah, I've been doing it. I've been doing it for four weeks. So you are now, I just want to confirm, you, your full-time job now is running a restaurant, cooking on your own. Yep. For, <laughs> four people. That That is your full-time profession now. Do, do you want the kicker as well? Yes. Someone someone new starting on Thursday. You, yeah, you're, you're training someone, right? Yeah. Amazing, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I'm training someone uh, who's got more qualifications yeah. tonight. <laughs> Hello, Chef. How long have you been doing this? Three months. Oh, significantly less than me then. Brilliant. <sighs> so, yeah, so it's, it's crazy, man. It's mental. But, yeah, it's, I'm loving it. Absolutely loving it. Love it, loving it, everything about it. So, oh, it's just wonderful. long may that continue. But the, the slight downside of that is that um, we've seen this knock on effect over the last few months that. You're now working at weekends, presumably. Yes, but has, um, uh, yes, it, it impacts the streams massively. 
Um, but when the one of the other the main reasons why I accepted the job was for my, for my home life. So I'm around more in the morning to take the kids to school, uh, which is great. And the kitchen, uh, it's not like that when I was working in Nutsford at the fine dining restaurant, the kitchen was open till 9.30. So by the time the last order came in at 9.30, it might be 10 o'clock by the time the last dish actually goes out. Right. And then you've got to clean down and everything else. You know, Sometimes I wasn't getting away from there until like half 11, 12. Um, whereas here, uh, the kitchen closes at eight. So clean down half an hour. I'm leaving Stoke half past eight. I'm home back in Altrincham before half nine. So I've still got quite a bit of the evening to spend with my wife and things like that. Um, so it's not too bad. It's all right. Just wonderful, my friend. Yeah, it's good. Uh, don't wear Sundays. So there'll be a lot of streams on Sundays. Cool. Um and yeah, I don't know why I've organised the stream for Monday because Monday's a shocking for me. I think it's going to be either Sunday nights or Tuesdays, mm. but I'm not going to be working ev- every single Friday and Saturday night. There will be the odd ones that I'm on. So I so. guess that that's also not not just a chance for everyone to say well done to you, but also a bit of an update on um, the kind of slight change in our schedule and the, the delays and stuff that obviously Steve's life's been almost completely uprooted. But we hope you can see that we're still here. Yeah, um, yeah. We're on a different day. Few, we're on a different time. On, last few weeks has been really difficult. I mean, even the days when I'm not working, because it's been that crossover where I'm still doing, I was still doing a lot of uh, contracts for my old job, like getting, getting loose ends tied up and things like that, um, and doing shifts at the restaurant so yeah it was uh it was difficult but i've i've kind of come out the worst that the last three weeks were probably the hardest three weeks in a long long time just like i, I had i remember three weeks ago and saying to anna the next day off i've got is mother's day mm-hmm. like i wasn't I, i've just worked solid with an athlete which i had now but you know is what it is what I'm trying to say is I'm a workhorse and I don't, I don't complain about it, I just get on with it. Well done. You know what I mean? That's it. Uh, so, yeah, I'm a chef. <laughs> Sounds weird to say it, but it is what it is, and it's crazy. When it's mental. Yeah, I mean, you're not, right? <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've murdered a chef and stolen his identity. <laughs> what you are is an ITV drama. <laughs> and it, it would be called uh, The Chef. And chef. Would... <laughs> no. Death chef. <laughs> <laughs> chef death. <laughs> uh, that's absolutely what would be happening. I love that. Yeah. That's exactly it. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's good because I'm running the I'm running the um, social media as well. So I've been running the Instagram and I set up the Facebook page. You didn't start a YouTube channel, did you? Um, so yeah, I'm just having a lot of fun with it. It doesn't feel like work. That's because it's not it's your job. Possible. I suppose is what what you want, isn't it? Yeah. Um. So yeah, that was a long winded reply, Stephen. Thank you for asking, mate. I think um, it's important, mate. People, like we we've been doing this for four years, four and a half years, and you know, it, uh, followed our various lives and various things we've been on, and that is a massive, massive upheaval in your life that is really, really cool, and I'm sure people will care about. Yeah, it's 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 scary. It's. Uh... Yeah, I've said all along, you know, I'm I'm very fortunate that I'm able to try this, like from different points of view, from a financial point of view, uh, we're in a position to, for me to be able to do it because it is slight. I mean, it's better now that I'm running the kitchen, but when I was doing the other shifts, it was a, a, a really big drop in finances. But um, yeah, I'm fortunate in that sense, <clears throat> and I'm fortunate in the sense that if it doesn't work, um, you don't lose the skills that you had, and I, I'm still a joiner by trade. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, um, I'm very aware how fortunate I am. The one thing you haven't done is um, you haven't said where it is. Like, or can people go? And, can people go? And it's eat? smack, but it couldn't be any more central in Stoke on Trent. It's literally facing. It's on uh, Piccadilly, which is pedestrianised, like the main high street. It's facing these steps up to the Regency Theatre. Great spot, great venue. What's it called? Yeah. Great location. It's called um, great location. So if, if, if you're in around, 
pop in. What's it called? Pig and Pitchfork. Pig and Pitchfork. Let's take a try. So the kitchen. So what it is? It's the. It's the pit. The, the kitchen is called the Pig and Pitchfork, and it's we're kind of running it as a separate entity to the building it's in. So it's in the Gin Rummy. Um, it used to be called the Gin Gin Rummy Bar and Kitchen, um, which was like a restaurant stroke uh, bar. So, but I've now took the kitchen over as a separate entity and he's running it as two businesses and every night it's open you're there cooking or is but, another so the kitchen's only open thursday friday saturdays right so anytime you go in there it'll be you cooking yeah yeah that is Pop down. madness if you like meat you're gonna love it i do like meat yeah i've been i've actually been working on the vegan stuff this week yeah i saw, I saw your um i saw your pictures yeah. I was looking at it and going, oh, that would be fun to not order. It's really nice, you know. Yeah, I bet it is. No, re- no honestly, really nice. It was really, that wasn't really, sarcastic, really nice. I'm sure it is. <laughs> I'm quite sure <laughs> it's, it is. Really, it's one of them where you go, actually. It's all right, this. It's all right, this. It's good. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah, if you're in around Stoke, pop in, see me. Thursday, Friday, Saturdays, come in. Give a platter. Best barbecue in the north. Discount for B Sign patrons? I'll always look after my friends. <laughs> always. Uh, free pint. <laughs> you do too much. Uh, uh? You do too much. <laughs> Sean Clark, shameful display. I'm never late, he says. Mark Fry's in, he says, unwell and the eyes are going, I'll probably be asleep in five and Adele will be waking me up when I snore. That sounds like me and how I feel right now, mate. Just cracked over the beer, my friend. Congratulations to you. Cheers, buddy. Mm. No beers for me tonight, school night. Uh, Callan says... Can I tell, can I I, sorry, can I, just, I just realised you said school night. Can I tell you a, a brief thing about my day? Um, Go on. Because I've just mentioned why I'm able to drink more than I might have done normally, right? I took my car in for an MIT today. Um, and mm. I've had a service plan with VW. So it's at the VW garage, right? So I like, yeah, dropped it off. Can I just stop you there? Yeah. Do you know why like, sometimes we say it's weird, it's weird, isn't it? We're like, well, sometimes we're so aligned. Yeah. My garage has gone in for a service today. <laughs> I love it when our cycles sink. I tell you, it's so mental. Good. The difference is I'm going to get shafted by a BMW because my handbrake's fallen. <laughs> and also, mm. um, inspired by you, I quit my job and I'm going to go over to McDonald's and say, can I run your <laughs> kitchen? And I can't wait for them to say yeah. <laughs> So I take it in, right? I dropped it off at half eight, and then I was teaching all day. And I said, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna, it's like I don't, I'm not gonna wait. I'm gonna leave it here. Um, I'll, I'll pick it up. What time did you shut?" And they went half five. I was like, "Cool. I'll, I'll be here by five, but I won't be here before four. And they're like, "Yeah, that's cool." So after my class finishes at four, I haven't had a missed call from the garage, right? mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, "That's a bit weird." And so I rang them, and this guy went, "Um, yeah, okay. Um, it was with Aaron, wasn't it?" I was like, "Yeah." And he's like, cool. Um, I'll I'll go and get him to give you a ring, and then he'll let you know. Because I, I don't want to break the bad news. <laughs> and I was like, all right. And um, and I wait half an hour. So this is now half four. The garage shuts at half five. You've got to yeah. pay, and it's about a twenty-five minute walk, right? Hey. And I'm like, I need to get going. And I'm picking mm. up Olivia, my child, in that car at six p.m. Right. Yeah. And so about 10 to 5, I rang them back and went, hiya, um, just after an update, uh, Aaron's going to ring me back and I, I need to leave now, presumably, to come and mm-hmm. get it. He went, oh, I'll put you on hold. And he put me on hold. He came back and hi, yeah, um, we haven't done it. And I was like, <laughs> what? Look, we haven't, we haven't done it. And this poor guy, it was like, I was like, what do you mean you haven't done it? It's like, we, we just haven't, we haven't done it. <laughs> I was like, and I've never had this conversation. I was like, what? I was like, what? Why not? Mm. So, and he was like, we, I don't know. I was like, but it, I mean, that's that was your one job. I, I give you my car, you do the MOT, and then I pick it up. And he was like, yeah, yeah, we haven't. And I was like, great. And he's like, um. And then I I went postal basically, and I I, I started giving all this. Um, how am I going to collect my daughter? And he was like, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. And he was like, um, well, uh, I don't know. And so basically, and I knew that Emma would go and pick Olivia off. I was like, we can, we can cover this. But I, I went on to full on 
angry mm. mode. And I was like, I was like, I presume I'll be getting, I don't know, will it be free? What What's going to happen? They're like, yeah, we'll do it tomorrow. I was like, okay. And he was like, I'll pass it on to the manager. We're, 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 we're so sorry about this. And I was, I was like, yeah, that'd be, mm-hmm. that'd be absolutely super. So, um, so I then had to get a lift home and now I, I'm walking into work tomorrow. So, um, hooray. But I, I, was, I, was, I didn't know what level of angry to be. You know, it's like going in, yeah. it's going in for a haircut or something. 45 minutes later, the guy goes, oh, I haven't done it, mate. So, he's, gone to, he, he's gone to Aaron and said, oh, uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. O'Byrne's been on. Uh, and, and Aaron's gone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm not ringing him. <laughs> oh, yeah, but, um, yeah, it cracks me up. No, injury. Yeah. Um, yeah, so fingers well, my, crossed tomorrow. Uh, my handbrake went, but it's an it's a electric oh, it's handbrake great. thing, so it's just like, oh, you want. just know it's going to sting. You just know it's going to sting. But anyway. Um, yeah, so Carmen says, right. I carried Bill's board in from the car park. It weighed oh. a ton, and he cast it in resin himself. Mm. Incredible work. It was crazy. Uh, James Firth Hayden says, Heidi, hi, hi, chaperoni Oh, he's trendy. Oh. Uh, Joel says, I've just remembered Steve promised the return of Mad Camp tonight. Can't wait. Did I? I think you did. Did I? I, I don't think I'd have done that, surely. Sure, why, sure would I have, happening as well. why would I have done such a thing? You do like to say things. Mm. Well, all I'll say, Joe, is uh, Damien's in charge of that tonight, so <laughs> if it doesn't happen... Is that right? I'm in charge of your Mad if, if my internet was all right, you'd have Mad Camp. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, the fact they have to listen to Mark Clattenberg immediately means I can't take <laughs> them seriously. That's you know he's the he's the new John Anderson on Gladiators. Yeah. Oh shoot. What? Jumpy jump. Gary George. Oh, says, uh, can you can you deal with Alexvop? Who? Alexvop. We've got battle streams in Middle Mother Russia. Kill him. Oh? Can I kill him from here? Yeah, what, what, you I, said, what do you mean? Can I kill him from YouTube Studio? I can't see any of that, mate. It's, it's, it's obviously down the bottom. He's new. Maybe he loves... He might just love kitchen. Oh, I see him, yeah. I see him. Hang on, I'll sort him. Kill it. <laughs> Get out, mate. Remove. <laughs> Maybe he's just a Russian SPG player who just desperately wants to be loved. Oh, that's just message deleted. How do you how do you block? It's the it's the triple dots and then it was like remove from channel or hide from channel or some sort. I'd use it on this channel, yeah. Um oh, the hidey hide bit one. And uh Joel telling lies about Okay. <laughs> Someone's telling so me. the utopia, utopia of Adelaide is a stinking hot at the moment. We've had four, four days of between 38 and 40 degrees. Oh, that'd be a killer. And I'm over it. It makes painting virtually impossible. If it yeah. helps, we've had about 40 days of rain, which makes smiling impossible. Well, it's not been that rainy here up north. There's been oh, the odd shower, but it's been quite It's awful down. Sun. It's just grey and miserable and crap. Mm. Um, Jill Monroe says inverted commas spray paint is secretly flying glue well every, <laughs> put it on a mug <laughs> every community needs its conspiracy theory I guess we have ours <laughs> and Holzman says how long do I leave plastic glue before spraying generally months if not years I had it years I had years of that from Talk Talk when I switched to BT their engineer fixed it in 10 minutes or oh, don't say that you've, only, you've not long changed haven't you yeah, I went from BT to Talk Talk, I think. <laughs> talk Talk are awful, says Jill Monroe. Messed me about for months uh, before I just left. Went somewhere else. Oh, God. Come back to BT, everything's forgiven. We've got a new one. Um, you know, all the work that was being done the first time we had the issue and they yeah. dug the things up, the people who messed up in the first place. There's a company called Brisk, B R S K. Uh, and a lot of people on the development are changing onto Brixton saying how good it was and I've I've stuck with Talk Talk and I'm starting to regret it now. Um <laughs> she just says, you know that guy goes on holiday in, in nine days, yeah, I bet he does. Oh, is it, James Woods. <laughs> the guy wants me to call back in ten days. <laughs> 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 It's like the, his name on the chat box was Reggie, and I just knew that wasn't his name. You know, when you could tell by the way we're talking to him, like it just was you're, not called Reggie. Not Reggie. 
James Wilson, if you're looking to save a few bob, Steve, go for uh, Rocker Box. Cheaper than the Dome, plus much more portable. Great for camping trips. The thing is, I don't really need one, James. I've got the big um, Uni. <laughs> I just think that like the, the new Gosney Dome, the black, black stealthy one, just looks class and it looks great in the corner of my garden. Um, Ashley Hampstead reads in. He says, "Hey, really? good evening, chaps. Um, great to see you live. I'm currently doing a late night decorating. You're already cheering me up. Aww, oh, good. good to see good you. Look at the decorating, man. Hey, decorating. You should stop and become a chef. <laughs> it's, the, it's the one thing around the house that I just refuse to do. I've got a friend who's a decorator, and he, we, we just get him in." Uh, maybe you need that, to vocalise your own ash? sound effects in the future to avoid them. So, so vocalise your sound effects. Vocal? What did he say? Vo did he say vocalise? Yeah. That's about the... Your sound effects in the future the, um, to avoid It's about the video being blocked. I think he's saying I should go... Oh. Yeah. Do you remember we did about that? The on the, game. Do you remember the... Um... I used to band on Ascension Island, says Joe. What? What was that? Little Mix. Little Mix Kate. Do you remember that... In the in the last few, I don't know the last year or so of the GVHL, and which is topical, right, of the YouTube yes. channel. Do you remember I lost the logo? And and no. so I I lost the logo file, and lent into it. So instead of putting the logo, on, I had a piece of text that would appear, and it would say GVHL logo, and I sang. Oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, sang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it it went. Um, um, <laughs> do you remember it? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was something like um, <laughs> G G V H L logo. I've lost the file. So imagine a G V H L logo <laughs> appearing now, or something like that. And, yeah. Um, and I and after a while, I was like, "This is better than the logo." <laughs> Maybe I'll do that. Yeah. Jill says, Sony are notorious for copyright striking stuff. Do they not have a three strikes and you're out policy? God knows. I don't know. Ashley Fisher says, guys, I have a master's in physics and work in financial modelling. I assure you my maths is correct, but I don't want to ruin the fun, so I'm happy to celebrate 75%. So. Fair enough. I mean, I trust you more than us, mate. Yeah. Uh, Boris says, evening all, dropping in when I can this evening between work and I hope you're all well. Uh, have some Harad waiting for me in a box. Good man. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Congratulations, Steve, says Rich Lama. Cheers, man. Well done, Steve. That deserves a party pop. Says Soz. Cheers, buddy. Everyone's saying congrats to me. Thank you very much, Remco. Ashley. Uh, Stephen Ryan says, bloody hell, that's fast development. Congrats. Yeah, I know, mate. It's um, massive imposter syndrome, but yeah, I'm just going with it. Uh, thanks, Jill. <laughs> Frederick says, I can, you can change jobs. <laughs> uh, Jakey says, nice one, Steve. Well done, mate. Uh, that's amazing, Steve. Congratulations. Lee Whitehouse, massively wishing Steve all the success possible. He has rolled his dice. Fair play. Cheers, dude. Uh, thanks, James. Thanks, Gary. Uh, there you go. See, I <laughs> old school Chris C says, come from double glazing to glazing it. hams. <laughs> Uh, Boris says, congrats. Congratulations, Steve. You legend keep going, mate. Scott, New Scott Newman. Classic Steve, casually giving away where other people live, says Frederick. <laughs> 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 Listen, if people let me know where they live, then they take that risk. Yeah. Uh, Sean says, really proud of you, mate. Cheers, dude. Uh, Carl says, you working Saturday in the restaurant, Steve. We'll come back. So I am working Saturday, mate. Yep. Yeah. Uh, be good to see you. Uh, come in and see me. Bring money. <laughs> it's just... Somebody, Hi, I'll be there. Uh, the food looks sick, says Sean. Thanks, dude. Uh, Warhammer and Forbidden Planet are right around the corner, then, Steve. You could drop in and roll some dice before a shift. Yeah, do you know what? Weirdly, even though I've not rolled any dice in about 18 months, one of the first things I did was Google where Games Workshop was. <laughs> oh, where's Games Workshop? It's, so, it's just not too far. It's literally, I think, on the next street, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Frederick says McDamien's. <laughs> also, Chris says battle streams in Mother Russia. Uh, <laughs> last stream you said um, I could bring my cam back like that. I could, mate. But I'm not hosting. I'm not hosting. You don't need to be hosting to bring my cam back. 
What's she doing? Wait, look at it. Watch, watch. This What's is you. Doing? I'm, I'm going to play. This is me um, role playing as Steve with Madcam. I'm just uh, swapping over to Madcam now. Come on, and I'm back. Like that. It's got like dick all to do with hosting. Uh, somebody says, had similar with a garage before. Dropped on Friday, told it to be done first thing Monday. Found off relentlessly till I go to pick it up on route to my night shift Tuesday. They were just starting. Uh, old school Chris, realised I didn't actually say good evening to you all, uh, even though. Uh, just me today. No Ruth, as it's a school night. I'm on theme and I'm loving painting something that isn't the murk, woody, spooky thing. Uh, Frederick uh, says, GBHL logo. I lost the file. Just imagine there's a GBHL <laughs> for minor logo. What's that? For my logo? What? Where just is that? imagine there is a, is a GBHL. Oh. Forming, That's was about... it forming? Just imagine oh, there was form... a GVHL forming a logo because it was uh, the four letters that yeah, joined yeah. together. <laughs> so imagine there was a GVHL forming a logo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Someone class says, ah, oh, that explains why the intro suddenly changed when I went through all the old videos not long ago. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. <laughs> the logo ended up much like the Palante, lost, buried, and drowned deep, says James Wilson. Uh, just joined the stream after getting in from work, says Kieran Townsend. Congrats, Steve. Cheers, dude. Um, and that's me caught up, mate. Good work. So, what we're going to do tonight is something we're just going to, it's not different, we're going to do the exact same stuff, we're just altering it a little bit. So, I think we're going to dive into this now, right? Well, we can dive into it now ish, but I've got a mix of a color on my, on my palette. So I just want to yeah. finish the next two cloaks. Well, I'll, well I'll, I'll quickly explain why. The reason being is because because it's a school night, um, because we want to be finished for around 12, um, well, 12 at the latest, to be honest. But I always feel like by the time we've had a laugh and a joke and, and we get to this, we squeeze in the magazine and, and the um, Facebook page and the rolling of the dice at the end, which I find... The most fun bits. I feel like we're rushing through them, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna we're gonna try and sort of not get ahead of ourselves, but not cram everything into the last hour. If you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So that was the idea anyway. Whether it'll work out or not, who knows? Well, I think we, knows. Cer we certainly can. You know what we're like. Um, but as I said, let me finish these two cloaks and then we can jump into a match. Um, Sweet. There isn't been. I don't know if you remember. Um, but in, in the last one we did the we just had the article, you know, the Warcom article that was saying we're getting a new supplement and there's gonna be a yes. made to order and there's gonna be a board game and yes. all this sort of stuff. Um and we haven't heard anything. And I don't know if you know this, it was a month ago. It's been a long wait for this one. Um yeah. couldn't schedule anything, it was mainly the GT fell at the wrong the wrong time. But yeah, it's been four weeks. So as of yet, nothing on that. So mm. you have you have to have to have to have to think some part of that is arriving soon. Uh, yeah, you'd like to think so. Um, all the things have started already about Adepticon and not any mention. Oh. Yeah, well, to be, to be fair, I did enjoy that, that someone, I think they're poking quite lightly hearted fun at it. They put, <laughs> I, I can kind of see this one where it's, you know, they've, they've got, I think they've got eight game systems. Mm. On the poster, <laughs> and, and that's quite a lot, you know. It's like forty. I, I don't know if I can get to what the forty, what, what, what eight of them are, right? Let's see. Mm. Let's see if we can get to eight systems with our our MS, MESBG nodes. You've got forty k, Age of Sigma, Sigma, Old World, Old World, Necromunda, Necromunda's on there. What's the flip, What's the plainy one? Aeronauta Imperial. Is that, is that on there? Yeah, I think Horus Heresy's on there. Um, Necromunda. We've got that right. You can't have it twice. Oh, we already got it. Yeah. Is it is Kill Team on there? Kill Team. And then possibly War Cry. I don't know. That might War be Cry. eight. Is War Cry still going? I, I don't know. It might it might not be. But there's there's like there's eight, right? And that that's mm. quite a lot of systems. And then someone um, has then like 
extended the banner down the bottom, you know, with, with a cheeky bit of um, Photoshop or whatever, or camera or whatever, and then put, accept Middle Earth. And what, what honestly cracked me up is that there's a lot of people responding to it going, what were you expecting? In this kind of, this isn't real. They haven't. Games Workshop haven't. There's some people who clearly think it's it's true that they put this thing up and said except Middle Earth on it. And it was like, and you know, I, I kind of, it, it just tickled me more that someone had done something as a kind of oh, oh I'm, I'm, I'm literally it's mad because I've just clicked on the uh, and I can see it now. Forty K Sigma Warcry, Old World Kill Team Underworlds, oh, Underworlds. Necromunda, Horus Heresy. Heresy. So Except we Earth. said Aeronauta car Imperialis instead of um, Underworlds. Mm. And it's like, do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, have fun with it. Poke, poke light hard in front of it. <laughs> I just like the fact that someone thought they would go, they've got, some people believe that they've got to the point of trolling us enough that they would put, <laughs> they would put the logo on the poster and say, you're not getting anything. <laughs> that tickled me. Um, but then the thing is, we we've had our little roadmap, right? And I know, I know it's not, I I know it's it's not much, but we we've, we've had the kind of article saying you're getting this and you're getting this, right? And so I guess they're I don't know, maybe they're they're avoiding the repeat of, um, you know. Actually, the, yeah, it, I, listen, it's we always we always sound and you know, given some of the conversations that I've had first thing this morning whilst I was having my breakfast, um. <laughs> We're not, we're not like GW fanboys who won't have a bad word said about them. When, when there's things that they've needed saying, we've, we've said them and, you know, it is what it is. But they, it's plainly obvious that there is something there that is stopping them saying stuff, I think, and stopping them releasing stuff and being a hold up and obviously being a pain in the backside. I think what we got last time about the bug it felt a bit of a token effort kind of thing which i was fine with because it kind of it was more not not the content of what they were saying was coming it was more the fact that that they just sort of reminded us that they are still working on middle earth stuff and it's still there and it's still alive and yeah. that was more what i took from that article than anything else yeah i agree um i'm as frustrated as anyone else it would be great to see some new stuff and find out what's going on and see some cool stuff that we haven't seen but at the same time plastic rangers are good I'm not that positive. why have new models when you can paint gondor plastic rangers for the fun of it yeah obviously um, uh, but the other thing so, yeah. that was interesting on that is and I'm not sure it's just that thread but I've seen it I've seen it on a few threads in a few different places and I actually thought there was an almost um, a slight change and not not from everyone because you know the you know let's, let's, let's be on both sides the fanboys Whoever, whoever they are will always say, oh, it's fine. And the haters will always hate. And most people are in the middle somewhere, right? Um, yeah. But there was a change where people are going, it's not just Middle Earth. And there's, I've read a lot of comments in the last few days saying it's all of their games, like, are backed up beyond belief. And mm. like, if you go, you know, everyone's saying, oh, they don't care about Middle Earth. But, you know, most of the range is out of stock. And now you're seeing people saying all the ranges are out of stock. Yeah, if, yeah. If you kind of go and look, and they're clearly, clearly, hugely struggling with sort of supply and demand, yeah, like across all of their I systems. Mean, I think, I think we've all we've also got to remember. I know, I know it was, you know, we came, we sort of came out of it. Like we're talking two years now, aren't we? When we came out of COVID, <laughs> but that that would have had the ripple effects from COVID would have been huge. And if you remember, not long after that, they had that sewer leak. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and there was someone threw a drone over, and, and there was the yard was full of pallets of stuff that was just going to landfill because it had been tainted by raw sewage, and they couldn't do anything with. So all all these things, although they they, they won't sort of directly be causing these problems, they will have added to whatever the problems are. So I think they're just I think they're playing catch up, and I, hopefully, hopefully, touch wood, you know, they'll know themselves but after two years we should be sort of coming to the end, and, and end of that and we'll start to get more frequent releases and news as and when and if you add into that what everyone thinks about the licensing issues 
change of ownership of that and who they've got to deal with, plus the rings of power stuff, if anything was happening with that, which we don't know one way or the other. If you add all them things together, that's a lot of things to cause a lot of disruption to mm. release schedule and how things are, are working. Mm. And that's kind of what I, in my head, I take from it. So I've said it all along, like I'm not worried, haven't been worried. Mm. It's kind of played into my no, not played into my hand but it's been a it's been a, a blessing in disguise for me because I've been that busy I've not done much hobby anyway so I'd have just been buying models that I was just be putting on the side if they were releasing like they were at one stage yeah, yeah. so it might time itself self perfectly for me where my hectic lifestyle calms down a little bit I will get a chance to do a little bit more hobby and then I'll start releasing stuff yeah. Maybe they're just working off my schedule. Maybe they're just keeping an eye on my <laughs> can't chef. Think Steve's maybe they're chef. keeping an eye on my chef's career and sort of saying, right, you settle down now. Let's. Well, equally, maybe the Middle Earth team have all gone off to be become chefs because they're, um, <laughs> you know, they're all inspired by you. you know, like, why, why are we sculpting models when we can just go and be a chef? No. Um, yeah, so oh, no... that was another thing. You know what? I've not, I've not said that, have I? So, alongside, before I got offered this job, um, I, I spoke to you about it, didn't I? Like one of the things that I wanted to do was cat catering, oh, okay. catering business. Yeah. Um, that's still a thing, uh, and I've got my first pop up booked in for twenty twenty four in July. I'll tell you the date. So anyone, if anyone fancies coming down, then please do. Uh, hint, hint, Damien. Just saying. Me. Um, bit, of, bit of sport won't go miss. Uh. I think it's the 20th and 21st. I'm looking at my calendar now, but I can't see it. But I think it's the 20th and 21st of July in Ulti at Stubborn Mule Brewery. It'd be the best smoked meats around. So you've got a pop-up stall, have you? Yeah, so I'm posting a pop-up there. So I'll be, smoking, I'll be smoking all the meats the night before. I'll be up all night smoking. And then, yeah. That's very cool. Selling it. It's cool, man. Really excited about that. Um, right, anyway, where were we? So we just like an update on the fact that you know an update on the fact there's no update. I guess that so it's been you know it's been four weeks since our stream. Uh, we mm. still have you know some stuff to look forward to. There's still stuff coming, but I, I guess I'm a little surprised that I can't remember what, what was the first thing. Was it the board game or was it the made to order? I can't remember. But as of yet, we haven't had an update on the first thing. So um, no. we're still as of yet no no news on on the new supplement whatever that might be. And um, there's no a little bit of me that thinks. Um, that was maybe announced prematurely, just to sort of calm down the rumours, the rumour mill. Well, it was all it was all done with the hobby bingo post, wasn't it? So it was like the mm. first post of the year, almost it was like almost like a bit of a roadmap for for the for the year, I guess. Um, and then I don't. Oh, there was a blog. There was a blog about the GT. Um, about the results of that. Um, which was cool. And then I think I think that's all we've had. We've only had those two blogs, I think, this year. Yeah. So if anything, if anything, is anyone with the dates? Does that mean are we getting one blog a month? And does that mean we're due a March blog? Okay. Any, anyone watching okay. that? Because I do think the um, January blog was later than expected. Didn't the hobby bingo arrived a bit later? Like. Yeah, because everyone was saying. Yeah. Is it even is it even going to come this year? Like 15, no, well, Twenty or something like that. I don't know. It. And then the GT yeah. would have been about a month later, so it might be that we're approaching. Um, we're, we're kind of building up towards a um, a blog article that might might contain something. Who knows? Who knows? Um, yeah, I'll tell you what we have got next month, which is exciting. Scouring. How's that cannot, I cannot wait. Are you going to go to it? Um, huh? Are you going to go to it? <laughs> Are you going to go to it? That's no, the question. I can't, I can't wait. Oh, uh, yeah, isn't yeah, that yeah, that's yeah. the open day weekend, isn't it? I think I yeah. remember I had it. I had it in my diary, didn't I? And is it is it the weekend of the twentieth and twenty first of April? Yeah. Yeah, it's an open day at work. Yeah, that sucks, mate. Go to McDonald's, ask for that job, and come to scouring. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you told me about changing job means I, I get less weekends free. Well, uh, no, I can't wait. It's gonna be, that is going to be a blast. So what's what's, what's be... the plan? What's the hype? What's the hizzy haps? 
Well, I've got I've got next week next week or the week after I'm going uh, to pick up the prizes, which is very, always exciting. I always love I love that bit. That's that's just great. There's a couple that are waiting to arrive. Um, there was big what, plans. Are you revealing what they are? Can you tell us what the prizes? No, are? no, no, no. You're just gonna hold no, no. the boxes uh, up uh, with uh, the prize just on the day. On the day, they're gonna be. They're always cool prizes. They're gonna be awesome prizes. Whoever wins them will be really good. I always focus heavily on um, the hobby side and uh, game and shit. You know what you get? What? Get yourself an Azog Mini Epic. That get, is cool, man. Get the limited edition one with. Can you see the little white wog? Yeah, how, yeah, yeah. How cute is this? <laughs> you look at the little cat. <laughs> He's gorgeous. I think this is a. It might be better without the glass. Look at that. Yeah, it's Ooh, cool. Little face. As <laughs> mega. It's very cool. Um. So yeah, picking up some. Um, I might actually. It'll be next week, I think. Monday or Tuesday. I'll go and pick them up. Have a bit of a day trip. Um. Yeah, and then just. The, mad run up I'll have to update I've got, I've got to update all of admin it's not time to do it but yeah we had a couple of dropouts last week but then the tickets like other people picked them up straight away there are still a couple of spots I think there's about eight I think spots if anyone wants to go very cool very cool jump on which is super cool I think I think eight don't quote me on that there's, there's, a, there's a couple anyway Um, but yeah it's going to be good it's always a really good weekend I've already booked this booked off that was that was the first thing when I was off the job can't wait that weekend um, oh that's cool so yeah so it's cool very cool uh, but yeah what are you doing showing people about further education how boring is that trying <laughs> come here please <laughs> um, I got a delivery I, I want to show you, I want to show you a world exclusive mm-hmm uh-huh. It is the 11th of March. And do you know what I've started yeah. working on, Steve? No. What would be mad for me to have started working on in March? In March? Yeah. I mean, it's not about it being in March. It's about how mad it would be to start working on it in March. Your Halloween costume? No, think later. But 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 think along those words. You'll get there. Throw on a, throw on a school's costume? Well... Not costume. I'm going to give mm. you a world exclusive, right? Yeah. Because I ordered something off the internet, and as a for the first time ever, I, I've talked about it. I think for the last three years, when I've done Throne of Skulls, the the project that I wanted to do, and I wrote I wrote the army list for it in 2019. Mm. When I came back from Throne of Skulls, then I wrote it December 2019, and I've, and then it was cancelled in 2020, and I haven't had the time to do this project. And this year, I'm doing it. Okay. So I'm going all out for Throne of Skulls this year. And it's going to take a lot of time to get everything done for it. And I ordered something off the internet um, that I'm going to I'm gonna show you because it arrived. And I'm mega excited. And the best... And the, you talk about serendipity, right? I came, mm-hmm. I came back from the GT properly inspired. And I just gave it a cheeky Google to see like oh, what's out there. And I found this lot. And I was like, I've got to get that. And there was a guy out there in the world who has sold this to me absolutely baffled that anyone paid for this <laughs> and what i've bought for you, what i have bought is this what is it this is the head yeah of prince imric's dragon and it comes with a broken piece of plastic neck so that you can yeah. date which Imric. this isn't the original metal imric it is yeah. The and it's not the super fancy plastic one. It is the middle Imric, where he was on a plastic dragon with some metal bits. Right. And it is the dragon's head and the neck. Right. And that wasn't all I got in the lot, because what I also got was two bits of Prince Imric. So here's Imric. There's his little Imric face. It was his body and and his legs. Right. So this guy is selling 
the head. And it was one. It was a hilarious poster. Go. Do you like? It was like. Do you like Prince Enric? Do you wish there wasn't more, all of him? And it was like we've got this decapitated dragon and bits of Imric, but he's someone's nicked his star lance and all this sort of stuff. And this is what I wanted. Right. I wanted this, and of course, it's a classic kind of metal GW dragon, which you're going to pay through the nose for. But because it was just the bits, it was actually quite affordable. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is what I wanted. So I have bought this, um, and this I hope to God is going to be on my Throne of Skulls, as part of my Throne of Skulls package this year. Can I guess? You can guess if you want. If I get it, would you would you say it? Well, you wouldn't say it. Well, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a phenomenal actor, Stephen Crow, so... I mean, obviously, it's a, it's, this is going to be a very vague guess. Mm-hmm. But looking at that mm. and trying to tie that into Middle Earth, mm. it looks very like the dragon on the map. Oh. Is he on there? So, He's not on that one, is he? On Thorin's map. Do you know the one I mean? Yeah. You know, yeah. The one curling around the Lonely Mountain? Yeah, yeah. It does look like that. You're right. That's pretty so cool. The, you know what I mean? I do know what you mean. Yeah. I can't think what else that would be. Answers in the comments. Oh, yeah. But yeah, so, and I, I just wanted to mark it because it's like, I, you know what my stress vlogs are normally like? I normally don't start this, and I, I'm not necessarily starting painting it, but things are in motion now that cannot be undone. Mm. And I'm quite excited, and it's going to be a long nine months. Well, you've only got a painting brand, haven't you? <laughs> but I hope, I hope <laughs> this, <coughs> I, I hope it's going to be the best thing I've ever made. Ooh. Yeah, I, you know when I did Bag End? Bag End's the best thing I've ever made. And I've, I've had some great luck since then. I've really enjoyed the the Ent board and the Erebor board and the um, the Hill this year. I've really mm. enjoyed them, but none of them are as good as Bag End. And my hope mm. is that I'm going completely all out and I'm going to try and make... I, I'm going to try and win Best Army this year, which I haven't done since 2014. And I'm going to, mm. I'm going to go all out to make a kind of super cool display board that I've got in my head and I've had in my head for years and um, who knows if it all who knows it, come up. It. well that's that's the plan so that's what I'm going to be spending it. most of the year doing this one project basically mm. very good. Cool. yeah I'm super excited and I hope I don't lose this <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like you know come, come September oh no <laughs> and then you know you go on eBay. Anyone else selling Prince Imric's seventh edition <laughs> dragon head? Oh, there we go. So I'm quite right. excited about that. I'm gonna shoot. I'm gonna jump back in the chat just so we're up to date. Uh, uh. Awesome. I have painted the cloaks on my rangers tonight. That was pretty good. Carl says, I'm actually doing some painting tonight. Not on theme, but trying to make some old metal dwarves better for a battle company. Of course I you are. I thought maybe doing battle companies was a good way back in. Yeah, I've, you know what? I've never, I've never, I've painted a couple of battle companies, but I've never actually play, played battle companies. Never. Do you know what's next on my list to paint, Steve? But... <laughs> it's happening. Not that community challenge. It's happening. Is it? Yeah, that, my art. That's next. That's the I next believe thing. I can see it. Yeah, well, hopefully you'll see it in about a month. <laughs> it's happening. It's on the schedule. It's mm. coming, man. 75% of the way through, and they change up the format. That sounds about right. It's Steve and Ryan. What was that for? Uh, Blood Bowl last Jakey. That, that wasn't on the list, was it, Blood Bowl? Uh, Blood Bowl wasn't on the list. Oh, they just got that gnome team. Did you see that? Mm. How yeah. good is that? Very cool. I like the Blood Bowl stuff, though, in general. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, Aeronautica is now part of Legio Imperialis, says James Wilson. Oh, of course. Yeah. Uh, and maybe the in, says Evening Gents. How you doing, mate? Whoop, whoop. Hello, sir. Uh, speaking of stream drinks, anyone drinking Cerveza Cristal? Uh, that sounds like the... Uh, it's kind of like you get an all-inclusive. <laughs> you see the um, sea salt flavour moretti? I did not. That sounds quite tempting. 
Yeah, sea salt flavoured Moretti apparently is a thing now. I've seen it, it pops up on my feed. Don't know why that pops up on my feed, but it pops up on my feed. <laughs> no, uh, make any sense. If you go in Asda and get a six pack, you get a free glass. So I've obviously I'll have to get six six packs because you don't have six glasses, right? It's like a dice thing. Yeah, that's exactly the sort of thing that like you you get and you go, oh thank great, I've got that glass, and then in about five years you throw it away because it's filling up the cupboard. Yeah, it's full of dust. I went to um, years ago. I think, <clears throat> I think maybe the first year Charlotte was born. We went to the Beef Eater on Father's Day. And they were selling um, mm. two pints. Like Father's Day, get two pints. And it comes in this massive two pint glass. And I was like, yeah, get that. Never, ever used it at home. Because when on earth do you want two pints at home? And we've just decided to send it to the charity shop. Stupid and idea. And it'll just go flat by the time you get to the <laughs> second <laughs> Stupid idea. Glad we paid for it. Never used it. Uh, Sam says if they're going to do if they were going to drop MSBG it would have been 2015-ish when it was on its knees it's mm-hmm. been nice not to have temptation and clear my pile of plastic a little yeah I agree uh, there's the battle report in White Dwarf that came out of the blue to me yeah that was a thing wasn't it is that this month that's, I think it was, yeah I've seen someone post it well that it, it, that's Ashley and Lewis right doing their thing yeah. again yeah um, mm-hmm. That they've done, uh, Ashley, who was in, he's in the chat earlier, and he's still um, in, yeah. uh, Lewis um, from the Middle Earth team, um, mm. have done three for the three years of the film, haven't they? They did they mm. did their Fellowship stuff, they did Two Towers stuff, and now they're doing um, a Return of the King issue, um, which, which is which is super, super cool. I haven't got the new issue, um, but I will, but I saw some of it um, at the GT in the exhibition, because they they've got the Return of the King exhibition. And so, whilst yeah. I didn't have much time to run around the GT, I made a point of in between games. Um, I saw, I just saw Emmett videos in. I, I saw Mr. Harry Barkill um, at the GT. He popped in. He wasn't playing, but he popped in. It's nice to catch up with him. Um, and I, I made sure to go and see the little, you know, it's just one of those tall cabinets. Um, but it was cool to see some stuff. They had, they had the <coughs> Grond, they had the original GW Grond in there, um, which was mega. And then they, yeah, they had um, Ashley and Lewis's stuff in there where they'd made. Um, They'd made that kind of crack of doom scenery. Uh, Lewis had made the Black Gate in a night, I think. Spencer. He's got it was it was sort of made out of he said it was made out of cardboard and crisp packets, and you could sort of see the Pringles tube as one of the towers. But the gates just looked like the gates. Mm. And it was it, I'm sure the caption says something like, I just wanted to show people what you can do in a night. I was like, well, I couldn't do that in a night. <laughs> I was like, just build it. <laughs> sure he didn't work sure he didn't work for these guys. Yeah, exactly. just, just make a house just make it in a night just build it in a night. I was like staring at it going this isn't inspirational this is heartbreaking it's okay. and it, I mean it looks great Yeah, and, and I, I'm not sure if that's in the White Dwarf because I haven't got the new one if they used all those bits or, or what but it, it looks really really good no, it's, it's, it's obviously not the you know the most detailed you've seen but for a night it was incredible yeah. and then um, and they had some of their armies in there and stuff which was which was awesome it's funny they mentioned that because I wanted to I wanted to briefly touch on this as a as a brief kind of topic, right? Um, I was watching, I was catching up on some of um, Stu Mac and Dan's. Um, they they call it the Hobby Hour now over on Miniature Realms because um, mm. they stopped doing the Out of Frying Pan podcast, and they they had a series, right, or, or an episode where they called "Is White Dwarf Worth It Anymore?" And it was it was basically about. It wasn't a moan. It was. It was almost quite the opposite. Where it's like saying everyone thinks white dwarfs crap, but <clears> is that just like rose tinted glasses? I can't remember what mm-hmm. what episode it is, but go over there. Stu, Stu's doing so well on his on his channel now. It's it's awesome to see how miniature realms are taking off, and they, they he's doing this regular thing, and um they had this little segment, half an hour segment, talking about it, and he it, it's really interesting because he kind of goes through. Goes everyone now says it's crap, but if we hold these up next to each other and we go through them and have a look at them, are they um, I, I don't know. Are they? Uh, is it? Is it actually crap, or is it? Is it just that we remember what it was like when we were kids, sort of thing? Mm. And and he makes a very compelling argument. If you look at it, all the articles are kind of the same. Yeah. And, yeah. Um. And what's the difference there? And it was really interesting. And I knew that there was going to be this Middle Earth stuff in White Dwarf. And I was like, I want to get that. And I've got I've got the last I don't I don't buy White Dwarf but whenever there's Middle Earth content in it I tend to because I try you know yeah. me buying a copy makes no if if every Middle Earth player buys a copy of White Dwarf I doubt they're going to see a spike in sales do you know what I mean I, I don't know what kind of mm. figures we're talking about here so it, it makes no difference but I was like I'll get it and I'll read the stuff that the people I know have put into it and made the effort with you know all that kind of stuff and um 
I was like, so I'm going to get that. But I was like, it's seven quid. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's probably going to be eight pages of stuff. And I was like, I will get it. But it's like, I, I was saying again, this is, this is a tough sell now. <laughs> and it's like, it's obviously, and it's different. It's different if you play 40K and if you play Age of Sigma. But it's like, it, that idea of just going out and picking up a white dwarf because it's got Middle Earth content in, I do yeah. think it's like, hang on, there's, is is that I, I want to get those pages? I want to see it, particularly stuff that um, Lewis and Ashley have done because it's all original. It's all conversions. It's scenery mm. making. It's cool. It's like you're paying eight pound. You're paying seven pound for like eight or ten pages or something. That's quite a lot. Mm. And what occurred to me was that the difference is even if it is like I remember. I remember reading White Dwarf when I was a kid and thinking it was the best thing in the world, and I read every single page of it. And so when mm. I was a kid, I only played the fantasy games. I played Warhammer, I played Mordheim and Warmaster and all that. But I read everything. I read the epic 40k stuff and I read the 40k stuff. And I was like, so the content used to be good enough to make me read all of it. Mm. And now, if I buy it, I'll be lucky if I read the Middle Earth stuff. Yeah. And so I literally am buying it to just read the eight pages. And I was like, what is that? And it occurred to me that and I think this is the difference now. It's not about the quality it's about the saturation of content that mm. when I was reading that in the late nineties and the early two thousands, you don't have the internet. Yeah. And you don't, so you don't have literally once a month you get white dwarf and that's all the hobby yeah. content you can get. Yeah. And so of course you read the Epic articles and you read the 40 K articles cause they are still hobby adjacent to you. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. now, why would, why would I read an article about 40k when I could go and watch one of the 10 billion podcasts or YouTube channels making me learn it, content? It's, it's similar to what we, we had a conversation didn't we, a few weeks ago on, on the stream about uh, trailers at the beginning of films in the cinema. You used to get really excited yeah. about seeing yeah, the trailers. Yeah, and yeah, but the thing yeah. is that you go, now you've seen them already on yeah, YouTube. Yeah. It's not as exciting yeah. as it used to be. And you never heard of them. So yeah. the first you'd see them is when you went yeah. to a film, and then it's like, oh my god, you, you won't believe what's coming out because you didn't, you had no clue it was yeah. on its way out. Whereas now in the world we live in, there's no surprises anymore. No, absolutely, that's a, that's a really and good it's a similar it. similar thing. And I just I just wonder if that like I, I don't know what White Dwarf's future is, but there's part of me that's like I can see them dropping it now, like because yeah. who are they making it for? And it's like the the only audience for it really are people who play Age of Sigma and Forty K, you know, yeah, or yeah. at least one of those because it is it is basically half. It's forty percent Age of Sigma, forty percent Forty K, and then twenty percent for like you know an article on SPG, an article on Necromunda, you know that sort of stuff that's at the end. And I don't think, and I think that was always the case. I think if you're honest, there's obviously the bit where. Um, Middle Earth was like the the third child and it had a big chunk. But for the most part, in in the glory era I'm talking about, it was half fantasy, half forty k, and then a few articles about one of the specialist games. Mm. And it's like uh, they're still making the same content, but I think because of the way the world's changed, I, I don't know if they're seeing their subscriptions fall or their bombs fall. And they're going, we're doing the same thing, but I think the world has changed so much that maybe that thing it isn't worth well, the, it the, anymore. The, the current generation. It's more their norm is getting content online. Yeah, of course. So, people like yourself who used to, I mean, it's, it is, it, there's probably a lot, a lot of it's to do with nostalgia and a, a, a people of a certain age subscribing to it. But eventually that's going to fizzle out because the newer generation have been brought up with online content and prefer it because it's more in abundance online as well. Yeah. I'd be really curious, genuinely, guys, does anyone get it? Because obviously that we've got gamers in here who don't just play Middle Earth, they, they play other games, but does anyone subscribe to it? Because I, I, I've, I've looked at a few recently and I've sort of re-evaluated the thing. This is a, I think this is a good magazine. And they've mm. brought back a lot of the stuff that I was angry that they got rid of. So they've brought back, you can see people's faces in it. And they do some hobby articles about making stuff out of scrap, you know? Maybe not as much as they used to, but the, there's creative, inspirational articles in there. And I sort of get the feeling, if I liked 40K and I liked Age of Sigma, I'd really like White Dwarf. Yeah. But now it's just like, and I, I will do it, because I, I love what Lewis and Ashley have done in the last couple of years, because they've poured so much love into that stuff. And I'll go and pick it up, 
I'll enjoy it. And God knows me, right? I like magazines. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm quite the fan of a hobby magazine, right? And I'll go and sort of support that thing. But it is now getting to the point where I'm realising it is, for the amount of content you get in there, for my interest, it's prohibitively expensive now. Yeah. It, it's like, I can't pay seven quid for 10 pages of SPG content. Yeah. Um, whereas in the past, even if it was, I know, I know it is more expensive, even if it was cheaper for less, the proportion that I would get, you know, I, I would pay this, uh, maybe I'd get the same amount of content and stuff I like, but I'd read it all. I would engage with it all. Whereas now I am going to literally buy this 200 page magazine, spend seven quid on it, read my 10 pages and then chuck it in a pile. You know? Yeah. yeah. No, I get that. I remember, I remember when um, Keith did his wonderful um, article about the burnt Rohan village. So when, when they released the Rohan kit, um, Keith had like you know carved it up and made a burning version of it, and it was like a four-page article about converting the Rohan terrain. And I, I went into Sainsbury's and I took a photo of the four pages, and I went away. <laughs> like, and I, I feel a bit sick and ill about doing it, but I was like, I can't. I'm not paying seven quid for four. I like this; it's awesome. I can't pay seven mm. quid for four pages. Um, but for a battle yeah. report, I'll do a bit more. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was just interesting because I thought it's well, well worth going on a look and Dan and, you know, still have a really interesting conversation about it and and about, you know, that, those very moments. And that, that was the thing that I don't think they particularly touched on that occurred to me as they were talking, this idea that it's not actually about the quality. It's about the fact that we've got so much more now that the yeah. same thing isn't worth as much. Yeah. don't know. I think, yeah, I mean, I think subscription magazines... They are they are going to be for like diehard fans of said content. I think that's just what would you call it? That's just that. It's, yeah, that's just how it is. Yeah, makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. We, we we spend. I mean, how much how much how much of your time in a day do you spend online finding the content that you crave about the thing that you're interested in? You don't need to wait once a month yeah. to have a few pages yeah. we've all said we love a book we do you do love a book but i mean it's like, yeah. it's overwhelming now like like i i, I remember that and I'm, I'm sure i've talked about this on stream so many times but i remember being so so excited when i was a kid when white dwarf arrived and it used to come in a blue envelope so you, i could see it through the porch frosted glass you know i'd know the day it was there as i ran down the stairs and then i would devour that for the month and that was it that was all you could get you can get anything yeah. else, and now it's just like. And I bet you, I bet you'd go through it numerous times. Yeah, even yeah of course, because it's, it's all yeah. you had. But now I can't keep up with the stuff I like for SPG, yeah, let alone yeah. the stuff I don't like for SPG, let alone the stuff for another game system. Yeah. But I, I'm just, I, I, I have less time than I had, far less time than I had when we started doing these streams. And I just can't keep up. You know, I haven't listened. I haven't listened to the last few. I can't keep up with Entmoot, like Harry's Entmoot, and I really mm -hmm. like Entmoot. I can't keep yeah. up with. A lot of Stu's content. I can't keep up with like a lot of the. I, I just find like Alex's content. I just find myself dropping behind on all of it, mm. and I feel like it almost stresses me out. If I'm honest, you know, it's yeah, kind of yeah. like I I need to more hobby time to to listen to the content. I'm listening to the Jordan sorcery stuff now for all the fantasy throwback, and I just can't listen mm. to it all. Yeah. Let alone buy White Dwarf and read an article about 40k. I forget about it. You know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I get it. I get it. But yeah, it just it was just something occurred to me, and sorry, someone mentioned White Dwarf, and it had been firing around in there. Yeah. Uh, well, funnily enough, a Ashley says, very interesting stuff, really chuffy, Steve, with your new career. Heading off now, don't forget, there's some Middle-earth content, this issue of White Dwarf, <laughs> that's on. <laughs> Amazing. There you go. Uh, Aaron Noonan's in, how you doing, mate? He says, good evening, lads, just jumping in for a while before I go to bed. How are you guys doing? Doing very well. And just as a uh, FYI, Aaron, if you're still on, you haven't gone to bed, uh, I have seen your message and we'll get back to you as soon as we get five minutes. Working nights is tough to get to reply to everyone. Uh, Stephen Ryan says, yay, Scouring. Uh, given your news, I can forgive the lack of reply to email. Which email did you send it to? Uh, let me know. Because I... I did a thing, Damien knows about this last week, where, um, again, with all the issues that I've had with my computer, I was trying every thing to try and correct it. Because I was thinking, is it the internet or is it my PC? So I reset a lot of stuff. Um, and I, like an idiot, uh, I got new antivirus software 
and I reset everything and it kind of lost all my history. So I lost all my tabs uh, and I have numerous Gmail accounts for different things. Obviously, I have the one for scouring. Um, that sounds so and... dodgy. I've got, got my, my offshore Gmail accounts. <laughs> um, I can't remember the password. I do have the password wrote down in one of my notebooks over there and I've just not been through it. So I've not been able to log into that email address. So let me know. I'll, I'll private message me. I will, get, I will get back to my private messages as I get through them. Um, boom, 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 boom. Sam says, Strong Skulls, question mark. Skeleton of Smaug, question mark. Oh, that'd be uh, good. What, underneath yeah. Lake Town? I've had another idea what it could be. Am I allowed a second guess? Yeah, I mean, I, I, part of me is like, you've just reached the comments where people are suggesting stuff, and now you've had another idea of you, is that? Yeah, yeah, no, I have. Uh, <laughs> and I'm just, I'll look for it. Oh, no, someone has mentioned it, so I won't say it's a second idea. Um, I like them. I, I like, like the smell of skeleton um, idea. I could nick, I could nick Phil's Lake Town, drill into the resin and bury. I, I, I honestly always found that quite a compelling part of it that the smell skeleton will be under Dale. Mm. Uh, oh, sorry, under the rebuilt Escaroth. You know, yeah, I, yeah, I always yeah, thought that's yeah. quite cool that they, you know, this is the sort of stuff I dream about in Middle Earth that when that got <laughs> rebuilt, you'd be able to look down into the lake and you'd be able to see the smell, yeah. the skeleton yeah, smell, yeah. and all kids would probably dive down trying to get all the jewels out of his. Um, mm. I thought that was quite cool. That would make an awesome time of Skulls. Harry says, I know exactly what it is, and it's a cracker's idea. Uh, the Green Dragon is my guess, says Ashley Fisher. Oh, Gandalf's crazy. Dragon Firework stuff, says Frederick. That's what I was going to say. That was your second uh, guess? Yeah. Uh, that was quite mm. cool. Uh, that's my guess, uh, Frederick, says Entmoot. Um, Bilbo's birthday display board uh, with a Shire army says Frederick that would be crazy ah good chance says Ashley Fisher Shawsman says right best be off early start in the morning Good night, everyone we'll catch up later in the week take care mate and then Harry says no I meant Jay and Dan playing the Black Gate scenarios sounds sounds like the same bits oh is that what they're oh right okay so the White Dwarf content is Jay and Dan is it I, was, oh, I just assumed it was Ashley and Lewis doing their their annual thing. That's cool. I will still I will still try and get it. I'm, I'm going to swallow it and. Just going to get some nice pictures of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, no, for that for a bat rep, I'll read it. You, know, you sit down, <laughs> cup of tea. Uh, Cal says I would buy white. Uh, I would buy White Dwarf. I'd pay ten pound for another magazine that's forty to fifty pages of MSBG. Who, who's uh, that? Carl. Uh... <laughs> I'm missing a few, by the way. Just saying. Are missing you? A few. Yeah. That's repellent. I know. I'm missing a few. Uh, if you send an email at sbgmagazine at gmail dot com, mm. um, we'll sort you out, man. I'll do. I'll do your deal, mate. I'll do your deal. I'll look after my friends. I'll do your deal. You send me some magazines. I'll give you free barbecue, and you come to Stoke. Oh, that's pretty good. If you, um, they're normally ten quid each, right? But you know, we've been through a lot here. So if you get three, um, we'll call it thirty quid. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. Next time I come to your house, I'll cook barbecue for you. <laughs> I'll do. Take what you want, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Sam says, back in 2003, I had no idea how much value you got for each of the issues uh, yeah. Yeah, that yeah, were back yeah. in Middle Earth. Here now, people who bought several uh, for the issues for the models, wise people. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. Yeah. Josh Crosby says, Grr, found my favourite faction was making its b sam appearance on the same night as my school's cabaret night. Unbelievable. Just face. No, that's terrible. Boris says, I reckon it could be an easy sell to parents who are relieved uh, that only seven to eight pound is all they're spending and the kid is reading. That's a good, good yeah. Harry says, I'd be more interested in White Dwarf. The content was different when I get it now. Only when MESBG is in it. Uh, I know it's all the 40k AOS stuff is padded out with rules and scenarios that has less novelty to me. That's fascinating though, because for years, like in, in what I think of the glory era, it always had rules in it. And mm. I have been, you know, everyone's different in terms of what they want and all that. But I've been through the era where that's that was part of what you get. And they were copied and pasted from army books. It was like the Wood Elf Army book came out and the White Dwarf would have the rules for dryads in it. And that was never a bad thing. That was, I never saw that as duplicating content. It was almost like giving you a free teaser or something. Yeah, yeah. And then also what you got was you got all the new releases. 
And so, in a way, as much as it was cool and exciting, a big third of that magazine was adverts, right? It was just, these mm. are the new things we're releasing. And now they've stopped doing that. So they've stopped, you know, and then there was the era during, like, I don't know, particularly during the Warhammer Visions, where they, they started filling, like, the first third of the magazine with new releases and just big pictures of them. And everyone's like, it's just an advert now. And then they've canned all of that. They've got rid of all that stuff. They go, we're not putting any new releases in it now. Mm. We're, gonna, we're just going to do that on Community. And the magazine will just be full of rules and scenarios and fluff. And then some people are like, oh, it's just full of rules and scenarios and fluff now. Do you know what I mean? And there must be like, and you know, every, everyone's opinion is perfectly valid, but they must be like, what do you want? I, do, you, do you want pictures and stuff? Do you want rules? Like what? And I, I find it fascinating that that's the stuff that I would have always thought was quite um, quite good, you know, new rules, like added mm-hmm. content. But obviously some people, like Harry in that instance, don't like that stuff. Yeah, yeah, who, who the hell yeah. do you make the magazine for? Which who do you pick? Like, you're never going to please everyone, are you? That's the thing. And you're trying to please everyone for eight different game systems. Yeah. Jill Monroe says the subscriber cost is five pound. I was subbed for a long time, but cancelled it last year. When it got tighter, I realised most months I flicked through it but didn't read it. Yeah. Um, Aaron says I agree with you that it is the saturation of content. If you really deep dive the content and style of content hasn't changed over the past 20 years and they haven't changed it up. Um, I'll just jump to them. So as Bruce says, I enjoyed White Door for many years but stopped reading them years ago. I prefer the late 90s and early 2000s as it had a lot of personality put into it and followed the content. Uh, and then Aaron follows up by saying... So a lot of what is featured in White Dwarf is also posted on the Warhammer community site as well. So it gets doubled up and regurgitated content. I also do the, I also do the same. And if I see one of the one has MSBG content, I go into one of the supermarkets, snap pics with my <laughs> phone, and then look back when I have time. Shouldn't do that, Aaron. Very naughty. <laughs> I don't understand why people do it. Is different aren't they no worries i'll send a pm to steven good man uh remco says i'm out for tonight lads i'll see you up at seven that's your six we'll catch up tomorrow thanks for a great stream thanks for joining us mate uh sam says feel free to steal it what was that about feel free to steal it it must be a suggestion Aaron that says, you. Damien, this has also reminded me that I still need to get the last three copies of SBG, man. Um, I could, if you, do you know what, Aaron? Because we're such good friends and we've been together for four years, I'll do your deal. <laughs> if you want to get the last three, I'll do it for 30 quid for you. Because uh, <laughs> we, go, we go way back. Uh, it's, it's 48 pages of delicious content. No new releases in here and uh, no new rules. So perfect for Harry and Aaron. Oh, mate, what's going on with my chat thing tonight? I don't know, my friend. It's just bouncing. Uh, <laughs> old school Christy says, for you, Steve, SPG mags, £15 each. Uh, Going to have to duck out, memory. sleep time. Uh, have a great rest of the stream chat, says old school, uh, uh, old school Chris C. Take care, Chris. Uh, see you soon, hopefully, dude. Uh says, I like the fluff stuff and the hobby stuff, to be fair, but I'm so out the 40k and AOS games. Mean nothing yeah, that, to that's me. a good point. That's a good point. They're they're they're, they're useless, aren't they? If you don't play the games. Yeah. But I guess, I guess my I guess my point on that is that when I used to I used to read them when they were useless to me. I never used to play forty k, but I used to read them because they were interested because you had nowhere else to go. But yeah, I, mm-hmm. I get that. I, I agree with that. They're, they're useless to me as well. Yeah. Um, eight different game systems except Middle Earth SPG, <laughs> says Sam. Uh, steal the smile skeleton suggestion. Oh, I and, see. That's what he meant. Feel free to steal it. Ah, uh, yeah. That would be cool. And Aaron says, no, that's the deal I can't like, can't be refused. You know what you email, like. Aaron. <laughs> and that's it. We're caught up. So, we did plan on going through this early. We've, just, we've gone through it at the exact same time we always go through. I think it's a bit earlier than normal, actually. It's, norm- it's earlier than the last few. I think we're all right. Um, Issue 70. Sorry. Yeah, I'm going to let, let you go through it. No, I'll go through it. I'll let you have a night off, mate. No, I, I don't mind flicking through. I've read it. Go on then, because you've read it. Means, read. Means, to be honest, your, to be filter. honest, when you were talking before, I had a quick flick through it. Uh, I don't think it's going to take that long. <laughs> oh, a, 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 a strong, a strong first strike from from Steve Price. 
Yeah. So we I'm going to eat me arrow. Shane... arrow while you're chatting. What's his name? Shane Ranji, is that right? The guy who's yeah. the stunt guy who got to play the uh, Mamuk War leader on the front, which is cool. Uh, I... He's gone. I'm not. I'm still here. I'm just turning my heater off. It's got a bit chilly. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I looked out. I looked out. He's gone. <laughs> what? Is he eating his arrow in the house? So what's he? What's he doing? Uh, do you want to play? What? What's this guy playing SBG saying this week? What do you reckon? What's his? I don't know. He, he looks scared, I think. I think maybe he... Um, what's just happened is you've called... He, a... looks, he looks like, to me, like he's had an elephant curry the night before. <laughs> and, he's, and he's took a risk that he wish he hadn't had stuck. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's it. Maybe he's... he's you know, we've he's all been there. Oh. You arrive at the game table... For game one, and you're like, oh, I don't think I'm going to get through this. <laughs> yeah, not going to make it. It's I, Sunday at War World. I think it's more of a um, you've just called a heroic combat and a heroic strike with two different heroes, mm. and his leader is six inches away. Uh, you know that kind of, and he's looking again. Oh, I did not see that. <laughs> also, oh, 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 you've got a hero with my. And a warrior in combat with his leader, who's out of might. He's just rolled a five. Unbelievable. You roll all your dice. You roll a five high, but all, all your dice are the same. You say you're going to might one of them. Oh, oh, God. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Is... And he's like, oh, you like that, are you? Oh, I think you'll find that's not how we roll around here. That's <laughs> literally not how we roll. Mm. We had an FAQ. Um, I don't, we can't derail it, but... Um... Oh, pairing off. Wow. Um, I also, in all the years I've, wa I've watched Reserve King, you never see this guy particularly close up. I never, ever, I've never looked at his war paint before. He's like, mm. the little little bits are like 3D. He's got little, yeah. are they meant to... little scars. Yeah, are they meant to be scars that he's then painted white? Yeah, because some, um, the, the, they've obviously got it, because there are some, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. What's the word I'm looking for? Tribes? Tribes, yeah. Oh, well, like the, body, the, the, body, body modification. Yeah, yeah. You can see it in his ears as well. Look at his ears. Yeah. Crazy. So. <laughs> Civilizations, that was the word I was looking for. Hang on, let me see if I can, let me see if I can do this, right? Um, I don't know how I'm possibly going to show you this. This needs to be here. It's something like that, and then I need to just do a screen grab. Not doing that. Oh. Well, we're on a three ways in. Yeah, but I'm trying to. I'm trying to screen grab. Is that is that screen grabbing? Um, sorry, this this is almost certainly not worth it, but I think could be quite fun. Uh, where's that going? That's the one. Just trust me. Now he looks like he's saying, I signed up for a Middle Earth stream and they've not talked about Middle Earth yet. We've, mate, actually, I but, think, I mean, I think we, this we stream's have, been pretty yeah, high, right. high quality content. <laughs> right, so I've done it, right? What, what's happened is I've got, I've got OBS sitting on the, on the screen, mm. right? And then behind it, I've got our Zoom call. And as yeah. I held this up on OBS, which I'm looking at, the zoom window is behind it, and so this guy just peeks round the edge of the edge of OBS on the zoom call and scared the shit out of me, frankly. And I've got I've got I'll, I'll stick it in the whip thread when we get to him. I've, I've got a screen grab of this, this Harad King. Go again, hello. <laughs> but there you go. Um, and we have the battle for Middle Earth begin. So I presume we're going to dive into the Pelena fields of some sort, which will be which will be mm. quite exciting for everyone. Um, shall we go on? Yeah. Soldiers of Sauron. Not all men in Middle Earth fight for the side of good. Hailing from various lands, evil men flock to join the armies that seek to crush the free peoples. In this pack, we introduce these warriors and examine their role in the War of the Ring. So it, it's actually an issue about evil men, which is kind of cool. It's a kind of cool yeah. theme. 
You have the quote from Faramir here, what lies or threats led him on this long march from home? And of course, we get a little close-up of our Haradrim warrior who we got um, in this issue, which is quite nice. Um, Lured by the deceiver with lies and promises of glory, the Haradrim of the Southern Land and the Eastlings of Rune have chosen to ally themselves with the force of darkness. Ooh. These are not the only men to have turned against the Free Peoples. The wild men of Dunland have chosen to fight on the side of Saruman, their age-old enmity with the Rohirrim twisted and manipulated by the treacherous wizard to his own ends. So it, it, it's quite cool. Um, uh, you know, a whole issue about evil men. And then, indeed, we have the Warriors of Evil in our Play in the Game section. Sauron's forces have swelled with the influx of evil men flocking to his band. <clears throat> Manipulated by the Dark Lord, they join his war effort to bring about the fall of the Free Peoples. Here we show you the rules for including them in your forces. Um, and then, using evil men. Uh, the character profiles here allow you to include men in your evil forces. The Dark Lord, in his guise as the Deceiver, has coerced these once proud warriors to aid him in his war against the realm of Gondor. Which is quite cool. You get a little, uh, nice little picky of, of Saruman having a chat with the wild men. Oh, oh yes, I'm the goody, don't worry. Uh, so we get the profile That's for the mouth of Sauron. Um, I think the mouth of Sauron is alright now. I, th I played a couple at the GT actually. Um, I think he definitely got a he definitely got a bit of a a bit of a bump in the new edition, mm. but he's still not overwhelmed. But in this, he was before that. He was famously a little, uh, a little, a little, um, I don't know. Underwhelming, but in this version he's oh. sixty points. You never four. ever seen him just for a long period of time. Yeah. You never seen him off the game board. In never. the oldie days, sure. Fight four, strength four, two attacks, two wounds, courage four, one might, four will, one fate. Um, and he's got transfix, drain courage, sap will, and terrifying order. So it was always. I think the issue in those days was he was never one thing or another. He wasn't a great caster. Didn't get a free will point, and he wasn't a great combat hero e either. Um, yeah. Over that, we then get Haradrim Chieftain, which is a captain with a kind of cool uh, profile. You know, you know those models better than I. I've never opened it. That's a that's a converted plastic warrior, isn't it? Yeah, it's a spearman. Isn't it? I think so. That's a, that's a lot twice then. Yeah, I think I think it's I, I, yeah, it's a spearman. It, like it, a... <laughs> it also looks like he's making an obscene gesture to the enemy. I think. Yeah. How about that? Um, and then a Haradrim Baron Bar Bar and a Haradrim Warrior. Um, they're all they're all exactly what you'd expect in terms of profile. They get poisoned arrows, which is reroll ones to wound. And mm. you get a Haradrim Raider as well. And you get a kind of cool battle scene down there. It's pretty mega. Yeah. Um, and I quite like this as a kind of... This is quite un-battle games in Middle-earth, I think. But the, 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 it's almost like an FAQ for the gamier people. Um, and it says, every time the player hits a model with a Harajim arrow but rolls a 1 on the dice to wound, he must re-roll it and accept the new result instead. And the, the, the example they give you is if you hit one of your own guys in the way. Mm. And it's like, yeah, you have to re-roll it. You know, um, if you fail to kill him. Which I think is quite fun. Um, and then over the side we get another page which is pretty much exactly the same. Eastling Captain, Eastling Warrior, Eastling Banner Barrier. Banner bearer, and they're the same, but they've you know they've got no special rules. This is the era where they were they all the all the men like Rohan warriors, warriors most too. They're all basically the same, just with slightly different war gear. Yeah, wildman chieftain and wildman <clears throat> Dunland uh, being particularly rubbish. And then we get one of our favourite sections. Next pack, we we call it the we we ran out of content for this page. Let's do a next pack. And we'll, we'll get to this when we get to the, the back and what my fear for the next pack. But the fate of Gondor hangs in the balance of the battle that Pelennor feels rages before the walls of Minas Tirith. Aragorn takes a separate route to the Rohirrim, heading instead for the paths of the dead to face the dangers that lurk therein, emerging with an army powerful enough to face the might of Mordor in the next pack. We present the rules for using the formidable army of the dead in your battle games. So, uh, it's kind of cool. It's, it's, I mean, it's... It's completely and utter. There's no, there's no reread value in this, is it? It's, it's quite dull, quite vanilla, old profiles. Um, not much to go back to. This now handy at the time, of course, but um, mm. not much worth there. And then you get to the siege of Minas Tirith, so on, mm. which I think they call. Don't they call it earlier on? Um, in the battle report, we present the first part of a huge multiplayer siege of Minas Tirith scenario. Sauron's forces are gathered on the Pelennor Fields before the White City raid to land the hammer blow that will bring Gondor to its knees. This battle report follows the titanic struggle of Gondor and its allies against the forces of Mordor. 
Here we present the first section of our massive three-part points match battle report. Um, multiple people, massive armies. And it basically says, the, in the combatant section, where it tells you what to need, it goes, you need all your models. <laughs> this is basically what's in there. You, know, you, you will use many of the miniatures and car figures from previous packs. Um, it's 2,400 points a side. <laughs> oh, God, how many turns? 74 turns, you know. Um, and there's there's the battle, there's the sort of map of it. Great boards. Yeah, it looks awesome. Great siege towers, right? Yeah. I suspect we're going to learn how to make these siege towers mm. in the next in the next couple of issues. Um, it's a six by six foot square. Uh, there's even a little dock section. We're not going to learn that today. I think that'll again be in a future issue. You see a little dock area there, which is quite cool. Yeah. Um, and the rules are, it's points match. The good player divides it into three. One Gondir Gondorians, one Rohirrim, one Army of the Dead. Um, and they come in. Rohirrim move onto the table from the board edge. When do they come on there? The Gondorians are heavily outnumbered. The Rohirrim move onto the table from the board edge next to the hill. I think from turn one there. It must be, it? It must be turn one. Because it says the Army of the Dead enter from turn ten. So yeah, I guess. And then there's no courage tests. At the end of each turn, count the number of models. So it's, it's reducing one force to 25%. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, so it's just a massive, massive battle. And then you get this awesome, awesome army shot. Check that out. This is wicked. Cool. It's cool. And this is the white, this is the Minas Tirith that I think we have made. Mm. I think they've built, yours, we've built yours, Minas Tirith. Hasn't, you've not got them in it either. No, I took, I took them out to, to show this picture off. Mm. I, I pulled them out. I, I got the card. What you get like gambling, don't you? And some Rohan. Yeah, ga gambling, Eowyn, Theoden, uh, and two Royal Guard. But I, th I think that looks mega. And that is the fair play battle games of Minas Tirith. Your your Minas Tirith is pretty cool. Yeah, I, I think. Um, and so, you, and then it's the these two guys about how they picked their armies. And it, you know, it's all very thematic and fluffy. But they get Gandalf the White and Denethor and Pippin, two trebuchets. All the God, all the Rohan heroes from the time, and then the three hunters and some army of the dead. It's pretty cool. And then you wouldn't believe Stephen Crow. <laughs> Very young looking. Is marshalling the forces of evil against <laughs> these people. It's A only young... former Middle Earth project manager, half of Trokenburn, cruelly denied from going to doubles this year. Mr. Adam <laughs> Troke. Look at him, look at the baby. <laughs> so little um, I meant to message him actually say this he says in my mind the most striking image from the attack on Minas Tirith from the Return of the King movie is the terrifying moment when the Witch King confronts Gandalf as he breaks his star I'm going to send him a message going uh, Adam in your mind what is the most striking image and when he <laughs> inevitably doesn't say that liar <laughs> I don't think he believes that um, <laughs> check out that check out the, uh, the sea star that's wicked isn't it it's cool, yeah. It's really, really cool. And so they do this, um, and they, again, they've just, you know, they've gone for a fairly thematic force. They've got two ring race on Fell Beasts. One of them is the, the Witch King. They've got a couple of catapults. Troll Chieftain, two trolls. Oh, such metal. Mm. Uh, loads of Wild Riders, Gothmog, loads of Orcs, some Harad guys. <laughs> I did notice, I was like, is this Beardy as Sin? That they've got, they've got five Black Riders. But of course, they are there in the game, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just that in this version, they, have, you know, Games Workshop have not got seven fell beasts painted. <laughs> they're all, they're all there, aren't they? They all, they all attack mm -hmm. the city. But I, I guess that they, you know, they only had the two fell beasts. So I was like, well, we want more Nazgul. And frankly, it's two thousand and five, and we're trying to get to two thousand four hundred <laughs> points. I was like, what have you got? Oh, I've got another wild rider. That's not going to do it. I oh, put another five Nazgul in. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's kind of cool. Um, but I, I was like, I'm wearing black riders, but yeah, they're, they're fine. And then, um, you set up the forces and it's got all the deployment. I love that photo top right with Gandalf on it. Oh yeah, that is cool. This, this, this cheeky one. Yeah, I like it. It is good. And there's some tactical stuff about putting the trolls behind the towers so that they, um, they can't be shot. Up the towers, shoot the trolls, bring them down. And Adam deploys his two fell beasts right out on the far edge so that they, they're safe from bow fire and that sort of stuff. 
And that's like, oh, I can't wait. This is going to be very exciting. And you turn the page and you get a painting guy. <laughs> God. Battle game. Turning and tuning in two weeks. <laughs> and I get it. It's fair enough. I actually like they're doing these big articles, <clears> but yeah, you tune in next week. Same bad time, same bad channel to find out what happens. And of course, they've, they've been upfront about it. They said it's in three parts. But as I think we've talked about in the past, I find it so frustrating when they do that. Yeah. I, I, you know, in the specials, we're, we're going to get to the Fellowship of the Ring special, but we've been through the 2000s, we've been through the Sound of the King. Those specials where they have one issue that just folk, and it, they're largely just a painting guide and a battle report. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, just the whole battle report is, is cool. And um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm excited to read on. I've never read this battle report before, and it's a real battle report, you know, two and a half thousand points aside. I think it'll be cool. I'm looking forward to reading it, but it's going to be cut up um, amongst the next two issues. Uh, then you get a painting guide for painting Harad. You do. Which is fine. Yeah. I don't know about you, but this feels like the pictures are a little big. Yeah. But, you know, you got... Th- <laughs> so, what have we got for this? Four pages. Four pages for painting the plastic man. Yeah. Oh, can you make the pictures massive? Paint his skin... And there's, the, I mean, the pictures are massive, and there's there still is quite a lot of blank <laughs> spots. Quite a lot of Tay Tay would love this, but you do all that uh, blank space. You got this oh. big space, this big space. Some nice colours, painting you know rich purple. A little t- a little idea on um, the the skin of the hadrum is darker in tone, so they've got an idea of how to paint like darker um, flesh. Yeah. Then, I really um, like the Harad models. I had a lot of fun painting them, and I like, on the, like on the next page, the uh, alternative color schemes are really nice because I'm always very impressed. But you you like the alternative color schemes, Steve? I do. I hate. I, know, I, know. I hate alternative <clears throat> color schemes. On Harad, right? on Harad, I am yeah. because they look a they look cool. But I'm always very impressed when people have the nuts to do it. Mm. I'm always impressed by it. I really like. I like the the sort of uh, the deserty light coloured one. But only on Harad, right? Not. Yeah, but I wouldn't paint mine like that. But you're not impressed when people have the nuts to do it on Minas Tirith. No, they paint them like shiny gold. They need a dig in the face. <laughs> you're 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 a complicated <laughs> man, Stephen. <Yeah. laughs> I just like that. I go, Steve. Look, I paint, nah, this, nah, I paint this Harad guy differently. Nah, for a guy who lives in the in the desert, yeah. believable. A guy walking around with gold armor on? No. Come no. on, mate. No, I wouldn't have. I, I love the idea that you could be at scouring and a guy comes up to you and goes, Steve, I've, I've come up with this cool alternative color scheme for um, for my Harad guys. And you go, oh, that is so creative, so awesome. Well done. Have, you know, there you go. Have a tickle. And then someone goes, Steve, Steve, I painted this gold minister. And you go, get out. Get out. What are you doing? You're a mess. And they're going like, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure you're right, but why? <laughs> Uh, we also have armor plates, which I was actually quite intrigued for how they're doing because I think I think the pictures in in the films I think it's wicker armor they wear, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Whereas they go for gold, which is cool. Alternate color scheme. Steve would like it because this is this is gold, where it's not meant to be gold, but it's on Harad, so it's okay. Is that right? Yeah, it's right. Yeah. Right. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Works. To paint the <laughs> to paint the gold and armor with the Haradrim, begin by painting all the armor plates with a mix of tin bits and shining gold. Then apply a coat of shining gold. Um, then highlight them with burnished gold. Um, so it's kind of dark, muddy gold colour. Then the mid gold, which is now kind of retributor armour. And then burnished gold, which is that auric armour gold, something like that. Um, yeah, solid. And then paint the I precious... i a lot of gold, so I don't really keep track of it. Oh, I mean, uh, paint the precious mm-hmm. stones um, hawk turquoise. So you get, you get that? Yeah. It's quite cool. Um, that sold a few, that sold a few pots of hot turquoise. I bought a pot of hot turquoise, <laughs> hot turquoise just to paint them stones. <laughs> and it goes, guys. Um, no one's buying the hawk turquoise. Is there, <laughs> is there any chance? You, yeah, but it's because it's turquoise, isn't it? Yeah. Is there any chance you could paint it on the Harad? No, that'd be <laughs> stupid. We really need to shift the hawk turquoise, guys. Um, and he looks cool, right? Yeah, he looks cool. You said. I, 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 I like the Harrow models. 
Oh, was Alpha. I like the aesthetic. I, just, I think it's cool. Have you painted this off? It just remind me of that. Sim- yeah, yeah, because I've got I painted the Mummets now. I've got two Mummets painted with the crew. What colour did you go for? Is it like this or is it standard? Yeah, black and like black, dark reds. But these aren't really black, right? Even the dark cloth is like purple here. Yeah, it's like purple. Yeah, I went, I went with black stuff. They've got a nice idea. Um, adding variety. Sinbad, Sinbad. They remind me of Sinbad to the old movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big Charles, isn't it? Um, it, it's the nice idea, sort of thing I did on my Mordor Orcs recently. You can watch it in the vlog, but it's been blocked everywhere, so you won't be able to. Where you paint, like you come up with four different colours to paint your McCloth, yeah. you do them on different, yeah. different bits. Nothing revolutionary these days, but quite inspirational for little kids. Oh, there he is. That's the little captain again, isn't it? That's a better shot of him. Yeah. That's a conversion, right? Yeah. That's a bit of a minute. Oh, that's awesome, though. That's a much better picture of him, right? Yeah, that's cool. Still looks then... like he's old in summer. Looks like he's having way too much fun in that battle. Him and Treebeard having a little contest. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, like you say, alternative approaches. And, you know, you're absolutely right. They're all really good, right? Mm-hmm. They all look nice. Oh, I think I really like the black and purple one. Yeah, it looks cool. And then you got the uh, this cream one and uh, the blue one. Mr. Mummock himself, Dan Entwistle. Um, I think I remember this right when he when he brought you. You remember the photo shoot for issue ten when mm-hmm. he turned up with his? Did he have six mummies or whatever? And he had yeah. something like he had two two sets of crew painted for them. And we were, it was like, yeah, Dan, come and bring your six mummies. He was like, oh, cool. It's like they got crew right. And this is like two weeks before. And he went, no. And we're like, dude, <laughs> they need crew. And he he painted like forty harad in like two weeks using contrast. And this is when contrast yeah. was relatively new. And they they were like cream. They looked great. Yeah, and they were one of the first things where I was like, "That looks, that looks awesome for contrast. That looks like a speed." Oh, yeah, contrast would lend itself well to that all that fabric. Yeah, all the creases and everything that were really and, well. And honestly, like, I, I'm I'm almost disappointed in myself that for years I mean this literally years I've been thinking when these Harad guys come around, I'm going to paint them with contrast paints on the stream. That's what that's what I've always been building up to. I just can't fit it in there. Um, I'm a bit disappointed. I they got, haven't they got a Bannerman coming up? Oh, do they get a Harad Banner? You might be right. I think they do get it's a Harad Banner. It's not the Easterling Banner, is it? Do you get the Harad Banner in the magazine? I think so. You might be right. I'd like to think in the next 19 streams I might honour the Harad. Because I, w- I really would like to paint it. I've got, I've got 12 that go in the Mummock that I might want to look great one day. And I've got another spare 12 that are doing nothing. That just feel like the perfect B-Sun models to blast through. Yeah. <laughs> there we get to your section how to make the Pelada fields <laughs> I don't want to be this this is poor this one it's poor <laughs> very poor just get it's green isn't it like yeah it's like we've shown you how to base your models just do that on a 4x4 four four size that's basically what it is isn't it I mean, it doesn't even look this. This is a massive, massive page of Mark Latham holding some boards, and it's saying this modelling workshop shows you how to make the bell in the fields. But then it doesn't. Yeah, but you know what the thing that got me was the fact that it tells you what you'll need. Yeah, <laughs> but then doesn't tell you how to use it. <laughs> But it's because in its first, it's a recap, right? So it says the Pelican Fields modular boards are built using the same techniques that were shown in Pack Forty Four's modeling workshop. Um, but it's it, it just feels a bit like they panicked. It's like make the Pelican Fields, yeah. How? Go, oh, <laughs> like like you made the other ones. And I think they base it off the mortar boards. And then it's about it's about flocking it. And to be fair, I think with this, I actually think this is good. That they're saying don't just cover it in flock potentially for the first times so they're saying uh, because that can look a little unrealistic texture and undercoat the model with the more uh, the same way with the mordor boards which is basically going down sand and rocks to it um, and then paint the boards with scorched brown followed by a dry brush of bestial brown and followed by a highlight of bleached bone before moving on to the flock apply green flock in large patches so not everywhere then dry <coughs> brush bleached bone over that to make it look more kind of sunburnt almost mm-hmm. um and then finally, a lighter coloured flock is applied in smaller patches as a contrast. Um, where you, you seem to <laughs> pour turmeric over 
Yeah, you're kind of a bit heavy there. Kind of a bit heavy there. Um, <laughs> and then after after that, par that, this is the paragraph for how to beat how to build the Pelena. It's this one, and then next pack, <laughs> next week more Pelena, and it's how to build balls to represent the interior of Minas Tirith along with the docks and ridge showing in the plane. Do you know what really made my heart sore though? Go on. That painting guide I read for you. Mm -hmm. Glue sand down, paint it scorch brown, dry brush it bestial brown, dry brush it bleach bone. Still use it to this day. That's exactly what I do for my bases. You know, mm. all my bases are the same, and it's because I think I think it came out of the Two Towers Journey book when I got back yeah. into the game. It was like how they based their Rakai, and it was it was that Scorch Brown, which is now Ryan Oxide, Bestial Brown, which is Morphone Brown, Bleach Bone, which is Shafty Bone, and I was like, God, I could I could do that, and my all my models would fit in. Mm. Oh, cool. And uh, and that's it. Um, what do you think, Steve? <laughs> I, I I enjoyed reading through it, and the battle report looks brilliant, but the rest of it's it's just good, quite good pictures. But it, it's um, yeah. it's not going to be yeah. challenging the top tables of favourite issue, is it? It's like you know when you were younger and you like really fancied that girl at school, <laughs> or she thought you were going to marry her. You you daydreamed about you know the, what your kids are going to look like. Anna and then you, she finally agrees to go on a date, and you think, oh, this kid, she's dull. She's <laughs> She, look, she looks great, but there's nothing about her. <laughs> Sadly for me, um, Anna O'Neill never agreed to go on a date with me. Tragically. That's what it's kind of like. The path not taken. <laughs> I wonder where Anna O'Neill is now. <laughs> um, it's, not, it's not for me, that one. I thought it was a bit... Yeah, I mean, it, there's a, there it are... It looks pretty, but... One, two, three, four, five, six... You got six pages of old profiles, um, a, a fairly basic painting guide with some with some nice inspiration, yeah, and then a fairly basic singing guide. It's, it's not one that you know. This feels a bit hollow, doesn't it? Yeah, great at the time. Gives you lots of. It actually gives you quite a lot of new profiles um, mm. at the time, but not much to go back to. But I am in, really intrigued to see how this battle report plays out, and I think I think I might gorge myself. I think I might read ahead, and just read. You know the the two yeah. parts next to each other, rather than waiting a couple of weeks in between it. Mm. Um, but yeah, so there we go, issue seventy. Um, cool, um, we enjoyed it. It's been fun to look through, but um, not likely to be challenging our favourite issue contest anytime soon. No, right. I'm going to jump back in, mate. Uh, James Wilson, right, folks. Bedtime for me. Night all. Take care, mate. Let's do my in tonight. I've arrived almost at the eleventh hour. Says Larry. Hey, uh, how are we doing, guys? Have I missed the draw, or do I have time to slap a colour on some warriors? You've got time, mate. You've got time. Uh, Alexi does says, "Love it, lads. Uh, we'll watch the stream later. Awkward Aussie time means I'm in transit for work during most of it. Ah, well, are you enjoying Give watching? Give him mate? a shout out. Um, he started a new YouTube channel. Okay. Um, forgive me if I forget the name. It's is it, it's not called Alexi the profile the thing's not called Alexi does is it? Um, let me see if I can find it. Lauren Alexis, that's that's not what I was expecting. <laughs> Subscribe, and that's not YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, where's it gone? I'm subscribed already. Um, let me have a look. Subscriptions. There we go, Alexi. It is, it is indeed, Alexi. Of course it is, and he's he's uh, he's doing it from the channel, of course it's called that. But yeah, he, mm. he launched a channel, and he, he's doing lots of hobby vlog stuff, and lots of cool Middle Earth stuff, um, going back through it. Um, and cool. yeah, I I went back and kind of binged the sort of, I think he's done about six videos or something, and I went back and watched it, and it's just really cool stuff. Um, mm. Really cool, super positive, cheery, great hobby stuff. Very very soothing voice. He's got the kind of ASMR thing that I always used to think you had, where it's just very easy to listen to. Um, doing some great hobby um, background clearing and all that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, um, go and check it out. Cool. I'll have to go and check that out. Yeah. Uh, Jill says innocent men, just ordinary men. All the time, yeah. So Larry says Jill. Trunkle Cave, morning all. Uh, I'll miss this live, but what to consult the people on the best way to paint riders? Separate from horses. Any tips on how to get them on a painting handle? Uh, have a good one. 
Um, I used to drill up the bum. Uh, stick a little rod up there. And, and stick it in a, a wine a cork. Ugh. Do you know what I mean? And do it that way. Um, uh, I, I, I <laughs> painting my Minister of Knights for like the Beast of Gondor Army and the Rise of Rohan for Thrice Girls. I just glued the riders on. <laughs> and then I painted it all. And do you know what? It, you have to paint less. It's brilliant. Um, I wouldn't necessarily advise it for really good stuff, but I was kind of speed painting all of those, and that's that's what I did there. I think mm. I used to use. Have I got one here? Yeah, I feel like I do. I feel like when I used to paint, when I used to care, I used to use the old crocodile clip. Oh yeah. And you could you you could grip the peg that's underneath it with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd hold one of those. So get get yourself a few of those. Um, that's what I did. Yeah. Uh, Larry says, I remember when he was the only black Numenorian that didn't cause terror, but <laughs> had to mad himself to get it. That's a, that's a great point. He was absolute pants, wasn't he? Has he, not, has he got it in this? Yeah, sure he's got terrifying aura. He's absolutely right. He doesn't have terror. He has to, he's a black Numenorian. He has to cast terrifying aura on himself, the poor guy. Uh, Aaron says to Twinkle Cave, uh, you can put a pin in the bottom of the rider's foot. Mm. Uh, bed up into some blue tack or cork to hold it up off its mount. Josh Crosby says, You'll hate my Harrod then, Steve. No, I love your Harrod, man. Uh, Larry says, What about me, Steve? All of my minutes turf is silver except for one guy who has gold armor. Yeah, that's wrong, mate. Many levels. <laughs> uh, Jakey, a mate I came to Skyrim was using his gold and green minutes turf. Yes, Jakey, I do remember. Probably hated it. I did. Larry Miller says, uh, I love this one warrior of Harrod with a spear that looks like he could be a hero. Um, is that the one that's holding it up? Right. Uh, Paul Steensbridge says, silver armor instead of steel, Larry. I'm disgusted. Uh, just Easterling banner. That's for what comes in the... Ah, it's right. It's not a Harrod okay. banner. You do get Sullivan though, says Larry. Oh, that's a great shout. I'll, I'll save him for that. Yeah. There you go, Steve. I I promise you, that I make that I make that pledge to you. All right, don't let me get away with it. Still a damn week. I'll paint some yeah. plastic around. Okay. All right. This yeah. is her shower uh, as well, isn't there? Maybe I'll do it over those two weeks. Yeah. The banner says, I think Isaac Ard has the most banner variations. Uh, I daydream about that old scorched brown. I saw no announcement for this. Just kind of stumbled in, says the banners. Well, uh, we, it was posted on the. It was only announced, I'll, I'll grant you it was only announced today, but there's a post on our YouTube page. We message the patrons, and there's a post on our Facebook page, and then that post was shared to all of the um, the groups. Well, the groups. Just yeah. before I post this in the whip thread, I just realised I'm about to post a screenshot of my desktop. There's no, there's no issue. They can't see the OBS screen, right? Uh, it's not like we called the hold screen hold screen for all those useless people who stupid idiots who watch our stream and we hate or anything like that. <laughs> um, I think it's just a chat, which is obviously public. I think that can go in. Uh, even though you're not impressed with the Harrod issue, I don't mind because issue ninety one is the best. Uh, I'm not even sure why useful for issues are a contender when you'll just get to ninety one. See and that, agree, says the old meal one, and then sign off from the last episode. Uh, hey, but he's in gold. Mm. What was that? Hey, but he's in gold. Larry said, but he's in gold. In gold. Oh, he's in gold. He's in gold. It's yeah. good in gold humour. Uh, I swore then. Oh, you hate to see it. I do hate to see it. Frederick says, I've converted the pointy finger Harrod warrior into a local scout with a walking stick. Very cool. That's a um, battle club, isn't it? Oh, and that is us caught up. So I'm just, oh, I'm not doing it. Oh, you're doing it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can you do it? Or... Well, yeah, I've got, I, 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 <laughs> your guess is a good one. I have a screen called Facebook. Should we, should we investigate what that might be? Okay, let's click it and see what happens there. Um, I'm going to make sure that I've got a Facebook window open because we we literally haven't prepped this, so God, Make I sure that um, that thing you just subscribed to is not. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can see your Facebook layer, and if I double click on Facebook, 
and then I reckon if I click on, uh, give me, a, oh, 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 there, I, th I think, I think we're cooking. And then it's, isn't it alt to, to crop? Oh, no, I've moved the background, Jiminy Cricket. How do you crop? Alt. Oh, that's, that's what I did. Ah, yeah, got it, got you, got you, got you. And then let's pull that over there. Um, now I think we can actually click on click on the thread, don't we? To load it. I've just launched the YouTube thing. That's not what I'm after, really. That's it. Yeah, open. All comments. There we go. I've got Frederick being first. Is that what you've got? Yeah, ruffle copter. Classic, classic Frederick. So we can go to there and to there. And if I now transition, poof, uh, let me know if I haven't screwed things up terribly. That'd just be super. Uh, we're about twenty seconds behind. Uh, so, want to see you guys? Oh, I can't see it now. I'm looking at Facebook, so I can't see whatever magnificent face you made. Yeah. Yeah? So, looking yeah, good? Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, um, off we go then. Uh, so, we start off with Frederick saying, lol, rufflecopter, which <laughs> I presume it's because there was no whip thread. Who Who knows? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Richard Clammer. And I'm going to click on a picture. Just tell me what happened, Steve. Um, how's it yeah, look? I'll tell you what will happen. You'll click on the picture, and then when you come off the picture, you'll have to go right back to the top. Any? Uh, does it look all right on the screen? It's, uh, uh, we're getting about half of that. Well, I'm 20 seconds behind that. Right? Yeah, we're getting about half of it. So we have uh, Richard Clammer, who said, tip my Bix box out early and found a solitary Harad guy. That's awesome. I like that. I'm going to assume he did something with him, so I'm putting Richard in. Yeah, 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 so we've got some updates. I love that. He's just got a big pile of pile of broken stuff. Um, that's mega. Oh, yeah, there he is. Got him primed. Got my nachos and a beer, uh, but still a very many messy desk of wag riders. I love that you've got a regular snack now. You're, those are the, your Battle Streams nachos. That's um, mega. Um, nachos devoured and some base cars. There he is. He looks cool. Slide yeah, well, Richard. Uh, then we have uh, Michael Dublé. Steve's face when he remembered the whip thread is almost as good as Damien's disappointment. <laughs> I've clicked on it. It is good. It's good double face. Strong work from Dublé. Thank you. Uh, Joe Holzman, Plastic Harad Warriors and some Dutch shortbread. Look at that shortbread. I love those. Very that nice. looks good. I could eat a bit of that. Mm. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, 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 mm. That's winning my favourite snack of the night so far. Uh, Frederick Schultz got a bunch of B-Sime supplies, dug out some half-finished conversions for some green stuff work, including some Harad local scouts for battle companies. Awesome work as ever. He's got some crunchy balls. Oh, yes. <laughs> Ooh, are we on the side of the screen, by the way? I can't see. Yeah. Is that working? Ace. Um, he's got uh, Crunchy Balls Vice and he's got Milka Oreo White. Sounds like a bit of you. Do we like, do we like Milka? I have a bit of that. Yeah, I'll try a bit. Um, who's in? Jake Pollard, no theme today, but glad to get some hobby time. Well, we're delighted to have you with us. And there, there's the start of Jake's um, Dale army. The beautiful, beautiful models, those plastics, but um, a lot of time. He's eating some Hobnobs OD Creams. Mm. Um... And then, oh, oh, it's an alternate scheme. How do we feel about this one? He's Who are you got, looking at? Um, Jake Pollard's. He's got a whip progress with Dale with a blue. Oh, yeah, coat. yeah, yeah, with a blue. Is that acceptable or do you hate it? I... No, it looks all right. I, th I, think, I think his base colors, I think he'll end up similar to what it should be, but the cloak's blue instead of red. Mm. I, like, I like blue for Dale, I've got to be honest. Yeah. Um, Morgan Morris is working on some Harad Warriors. Mm hmm. Morgan. Oh, Morris, you love to see it, sir. Enjoy. Um, I don't think we've got any um, updates on that. Tom Christian, I'm going to try and get these cleaned up tonight. And that is a sprue of Harad Warriors. I love to see it, mate. Love that people got these old Harad sprues lying around in there. 
giving them some love. Scott Newman, at the ready. Rich tea biscuits and a cuppa. I'm sorry about that, man. You're not a fan of rich tea? <laughs> pointless, aren't you? <laughs> pointless. That's pointless. That's such a brutal <laughs> pot down. What's the point of even being a biscuit when you're like that? It's like someone started to build a recipe for a biscuit <laughs> and I just couldn't be asked and just give up. <laughs> It, does, it feels unfinished, doesn't it? It's like it? the basics, yeah. you know what I mean? You've got a great just start take the for basic biscuit. Box. What are you going to do to it next? That's it, mate. You imagine <laughs> like this is like a, a an episode of The Apprentice and their task was to make a biscuit and Alan Sugar's going, it's a great start to the biscuit, but what's next? That's not the biscuit. It is, yeah, it is a bit it is a bit bland, isn't it? But, I, but they, they're fine, you know? They just they just don't have they don't have nuts, they don't have chocolate, they don't have the drawers of, of many things, but they just do what they do and they do it quite well. It's good for dipping, I think. Uh oh my god, he's how many is he doing? Have you seen his progress picks? Yeah, that's good. That's about forty, isn't it? All armour finished. That what a great batch post. That must be satisfying when you when you finish that. Seen the ones he finished yesterday. Harald cool. I finished yesterday. Oh, they look awesome, dude. Yeah, really nice. They're, that's I really like that colour scheme. Nice kind of like sandy weathering on them as well. Mm. Any chance of a uh, any chance of a colour scheme for those, Scott? Can you fire that over? Might be nice. Um, he's gone in. Uh, Jen's was I don't own any Harad, so putting finishing touches on my Bretonia BSB. Excuse me, and continuing on my questing night. Very cool. Um, you picking up a green knight, Jens? You picking up a classic green knight? Now he's coming back. James Wilson, by extraordinary chance, this little dude was sitting at the bottom of the random minis box. I love it. I love it so much. It's exactly what this I think these streams should be. Just these poor little models that haven't got the slightest hope of ever being painted <laughs> until their time comes. Uh, Sam Huddy, here's the teaser for Seven Stones. Oh, class. Oh, that sounds like a good tournament. Polishing off these guys that are converted from Harad Warriors and we're using their profile for the tournament. What the theme is remains to be seen. So he's going to be using. So the profile will be Harad Warriors. Oh, they're very cool. Very, uh, yeah, very cool. What do you think, Steve? What's the what? What are they? I mean, they're going to be. They're obviously going to be. They're nice. Gondorian warriors, aren't they? Nice to have gone. Yeah, gone, gone into Harrods because they're not, not going to wear that armor all the way. When I think this could be like a kin strife thing, you know, the civil war of Gondor, that sort of stuff. They look cool. I like them a lot. They're really cool, Sam. Very cool. You should bring them to a a, a deeply corrupt tournament where the TOs fundamentally just pick the winner. <laughs> um, Sam Earnshaw, currently in the ugly phase. Oh, that's how I feel about my models at that, that point. Um, block based cards done tonight. Lovely scheme from Sam. Mm -hmm. uh, lovely not. I do like the the cream alternate Harad theme. I think it's cool. Yeah, um, Gary George. Do you want to say Gary George? <laughs> Gary George. Uh, one Harad. Where's that warrior. shooter? Where's that shooter, Gary George? <laughs> <laughs> Apologies to Gary George. Uh, one Haraji Warrior <laughs> off and cleaned up. Huzzah! Huzzah indeed, my friend. You are in. That's all you need to do. You have made progress towards clearing your backlog. We love it. Uh, Boris Herzog, have the, had these in the shed for years. We'll see how many I can assemble tonight. Great stuff. Assembled quite a few. Is there a, oh yeah, there's a little progress. Grand total mm -hmm. of the hobby of most night. Thanks for the great stream. Well, thank you for joining us. That's very kind of you, sir. Um, Christopher Cooper, that's one less chap in the painting. Oh, he's nice as well, Chris. Yeah, very cool. Matt Hodgson, restarting an abandoned project, trying to make these four look like the tester. He's got what looks like a Nokia phone in the uh, background. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might might be a baby monitor. Yeah. <laughs> or it could be a 3310. Uh, uh, again. Nice that, though, that's cool, mate. Yeah, it's a nice colour scheme. I like the white. Is that, is that blue or is that purple we've got going on there? It's like blue, right? Hmm. Very cool. Oh, he's got... Oh, sorry, I've just found the um, update. Yeah, it is blue. That's great. Love it. Yeah, it's a nice alternative for Ed. Mm. Uh, Remco Keekstra. All right, time to crack open a new box set from the... Oh, he's got a draw, Steve. A draw? I think this guy's pipped you. 
Let's get some draws. <laughs> Sadio Harad box. <laughs> he's uh, he's raised you a Harad draw. Look at that. Look at that bad boy. I've just seen a message coming from Scott Newman, who I believe has sent over his painting recipe. Thank you very much, my friend. I will do a worse version of it in some months or years to come. Uh, Remco, I think I'm being generous. I'm putting him in because he's opened a draw. But are we allowing it? Oh, he's built them. Oh, he's built them. Yeah, I've just seen them. Yeah, uh, yeah so such nice models. Was also finished my Axeman of Lozana. Also, I bought this gem the other day. This must be up there with the best boxes ever released. It's called Wardens of the Westgate. So I'm going to click on this. You know these boxes, right? People always talk about these, yeah? Yeah. yeah. I've got a controversial opinion. Mm. I don't get these. <laughs> this is one of the best boxes ever. It's it's just the models. Am I... Change my mind. <laughs> I, th I think it's big... Yeah, I think it's just conv a convenience in it. Or that they're all in one box. I get it for like you know like a starter set where there's like a rule book with it or something and maybe mm. some exclusive models but like with this this must be up there with the best boxes ever released it's like it's just it's just a bunch of smaller boxes in a bigger box isn't it but I it's think just, it was, it's just a way of buying it was a oh it was a way and like it is now again because it's kind of the same do what they've done now but it's a way of buying an army yeah in one go it's a battle host thing isn't it yeah yeah, in one go, rather than buying the bits, building the army, there's the army. Yeah, and I would always, you know, you know how we are on this channel. I would, I would never like yuck someone's yum, but I, I always like that idea that every now and again someone says they get that, you know, the, the warriors of the Westfold or the riders of Theoden box, and they go, oh, this is so cool, and I just picture myself doing, you know, the scared girl gif. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kind of going, <laughs> is it? But, um, you know, uh, Remco, if, if you've got that and you're happy with it and it has, made, it has brought you joy, then more power to you. And I, I, I wish I felt as good as you do about it because it must be wonderful. Uh, Ashley Fisher is in. Oh, he's a four dicer. Mm. Um, six bit. He's a five dicer, isn't he? No, four, I forget. Oh, my God, I forgot. Is it, no, it's five dice covers, isn't it? Um, Ashley Fisher, six women cleaned up, assembled, and now undercoated. Not pictured. <laughs> we'll take your word for it, man. Uh, lovely stuff. Joshua Crosby is in. And he says, just got in and found I had eight plastic poses ready for painting, mostly converted, but with so little time, I've decided to try and work on some more conversions for the other four poses, I said, then I might find a stream that eligible for painting. As always, dude. So good. Oh, he's giving them all like metal masks or something. Mm. They're awesome. I love the guy. I love the guy on the far left with the dagger. Yeah. Just always, always super inspirational, Josh. Top work, my friend. Oh, and there's four more. There's another one. Again. Oh, that poor guy's got his broken spear. I suppose that those must be the. He mentioned he was doing four new ones, wasn't he? Yeah. Those must for, he said uh You've been somewhere there, Martin. Done some work on some conversion for the other four poses. So that's obviously what he's working on. Um so he is in. Daily uh SPG, not on theme, as I haven't been hobbying much. I thought I'd dive back in. It's great to see you, man. And um, I hope it helps. To help me, I'm going through the Battle Company's book to help me get the mojo back. And he's got some awesome dwarves. You know, um I think they came in one of the um best boxes ever released by Games Workshop, those models. I don't know if you remember there's the um the Wardens of the Westgate box. So good. Yeah, good. Looking good, my friend. Um, uh, we then have Larry Miller joining late tonight, and it's a oh, it's a fairly basic photo from Larry. Yes. Yeah, where's the Where's the computer? Where's the Pez? Mm. Where's the slightly psychotically eaten food? <laughs> um, but great to have you in, my friend, and you are in the draw. Sean Clark first continued to Harad for my Corsairs Harad army, and I imagine underneath this. We're going to find some beautifully painted Harad Warriors. Very nice. Got two pictures, and oh, look at that. Oh, that's a different one, isn't it? So we've got some sort of, mm. some sort of tan, red, and cyan. Almost, almost looks like CM, they've been painted in CMYK. They're all cyan, magenta, <laughs> yellow. <laughs> that's perfect. They're the print colours. And if he, got them, if he was printing them for screen, he'd have to do them in RGB instead, and they'd be completely different. 
They look great, man. They look good. Great colours. You love to see it. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Then we have Ryan Cuthbert who is in saying, Chuck some Nurgle's rot on my Haradrim spears. <laughs> oh, Cuthbert is after a dice. He's, he's working the system. Because I've never got around to representing poison weapons. Fair enough. He's not. Colors isn't letting a chance for a uh, another dice go begging. Although I got the same out. I know you're not done tonight. Dice Harad are beautiful. I really like that. The, the, such a great purple, such a great red. Oh, and he's got six of them there. Looking good. Imagine, imagine if he gets the dice. Mm. Painting some green on his spears. Coffers. <laughs> Coffers doing cover scenes. They're going to riot. Uh, Stephen Ryan, um, my first ever Haradrim, fresh out of the magazine wrapper. Oh yeah, I saw that. He had the um, Stephen had issue seventy in wrapper. Mm. Um, with um, you know, with the sprue back from back in the day. So he's he's properly torn them open. Mm. Lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. And then certainly what appears to be my last the last comment is from me. And can you click can you see this? I don't know how this is gonna display, but can you see the, the sneaky war leader having a peek around OBS? I'm trying to find my picture, that's it. It was refreshed, but it's taking its time. It's Streamlabs, isn't it? Streamlabs. So this is this is what scared the crap out of me earlier when I'm holding you can you can see, oh, yeah. see you can see me on on Streamlabs holding it up um, in the middle, and then because the zoom calls behind, this guy comes peering around the corner to scare the crap out of me. Um, but yeah, such good fun. Uh, that was all I had, which is thirty nine comments. I'm going to give it a cheeky refresh. Forty four though. Forty four. Mm. Always worth it's a refresh. Smell uh, as join the party. I think. Some updates. Oh, for the top comment. Uh, so there we go. So we have swords and brushes is in painting space marines tonight, but added some colours onto Harad or in between paints, looking lovely. Oh, the one on the right in particular, I love that. So yes. good. I presume they're the same colour scheme, but it's just at different points on there. Looking awesome, mate. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Parkill's in. Parkill? Are Parkill? Are Are Added these to the past just for you guys. It's not for us, guys. It's for you, Guy. Um, thank you for joining in, my friend. Always great to see you. Harry Parkill in. I've done some purple. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I can't believe he's ruined that model. Who has? Harry. Harry Miller shoved some red on these at the 11th hour. Was he? How's he ruined him? Scroll down. <laughs> Sounds like a threat. Uh, so he gets in for doing some harad, guys, and then what's he done? <laughs> I think that looks pretty good. I don't think that's Larry being Larry. I think that's a genuine ultimate. Script. If your name was in gold, you'd, you'd have gold armor, wouldn't you? No. Is, no. is it too much? Too much. Is it like you walking around in a giant crow suit? <laughs> Josh Cosby I'm love that. Into beer chef. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Josh Crosby has given us an update and um, what a way to end what a way to end the thread with a phenomenal as ever um conversion. What face is that? Do we recognise that face? It kinda looks like it's a skeleton. Yeah, I it? was thinking that, like a Dead Marsh Spectre maybe, or a I don't think it's an army the dead guy. It looks like a metal face. Yeah. Um, could be a different range, of course. Could be a skeleton. I, th I think Josh normally does GW stuff, so mm. well, who knows? Uh, it looks awesome, though, mate. Absolutely great. And that is it, I believe. That's it. How many do you get? Uh, I don't know because I can't count whilst doing this bit. I can go back to the main screen, though, to bring us back. And transition. Oof. Oh! Great to have 28 of you in um, while we. Oh. Uh, to, for the, the drama of the draw. Do you want to um, jump in the chat and catch up while I work out what we got? Yeah. Uh, Frederick says, I converted. Hold on that one, anyway. Uh, 
Joshua is sitting on a stack of 91s up in the value. Uh, Frederick Schultz, can we see the whip thread on stream? Uh, it works so far. The banners, unbelievable. They've got things reasonably working. A rude. Arthur Pick says Frederick. True says the banners. Speaking of poor effort in baking at GCSE Food Tech, I forgot to get ingredients before one lesson. Grab flour and jam to make a jam pie. Got a C, says Sam Hoody. Jam pie is excellent. <laughs> Steve knows all about the draws of Harad, says Banners. If, um, you? Would, you, would you serve jam pie at your no. barbecue restaurant? <laughs> Scott Newman says, lol, Steve, the worst thing that they... Rich tea lights, that's even worse. <laughs> rich tea lights? God almighty, they're not even rich teas. It's getting just worse. Dust, it's just dust stuck together, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it's basically just eating air. Dust, dust and PVA. You could eat that uh, sneeze and you'd weigh more. <laughs> less, just less. The of oh, eating them up, is I have less. no smell or taste just now with COVID, so I made the decision to eat the crappiest biscuits in the tin. <laughs> You may as well, in your head, just try and convince yourself there's something else. Uh, Larry Miller says, I wonder what Sam's theme is, where the idea came from, and if it's truly fluffy at heart. What oh, scene that, that's a, that's led a him reference. on this long march from starting, if he would not rather have stayed there? That's the Faramir's quote, isn't it? Yeah. So does that mean Some that Larry thinks... Make us of it all. Does that mean Larry thinks it's something like that? Are they Oscillithodaterans? Could be. But then, but it, he said he was going to use the Harad Warrior profiles, right? So you'd use Osgiliath veteran profiles, right? Oh, did he? I didn't know he said that. Mm. Uh, I can answer one question. It came from James. I'm the mindless crony who does as he's told. I can answer one question. It came from James. James Wilson is his partner, isn't it? Yeah, but what? So it's James Wilson's idea is what they're saying. All oh, right, okay. Oh, I see, yeah. uh, Stephen Ryan says every issue up tonight one is going to be straight oh. out of the wrapper it's so weird to open mags I received in the post so many years ago it's lovely to <laughs> share this with you I, ho I hope the streams are bringing you joy as you investigate yeah, these previously untapped hobby cool. I mean I, I find the same thing I haven't read them I've never read these mm. uh, so at best I've dipped into a couple of hobby articles before so every week when I read it it's it's new for me yeah don't tempt Steve further with the crow suit, says the banners. Josh Crosby says, I sacrificed a barrow white. Yeah, I oh. thought it did look like that, yeah. Very cool, mate. It looks awesome. A barrow white, of course. I was thinking Denmark Spectre, but yeah, of course it's barrow white. Awesome. Elf Helm needs an elf helm. Helm hammer <laughs> needs a hammer. And an in gold needs to be in gold. <laughs> Larry. Uh, M Boot Videos says, is that a barrow white face? Oh, and can Smashed it. That's, yeah, why, that's, why he's the, that's why he's the hobby salvage journalist. A plastic warrior. Oh, my eyes are going to make it. Harrod warrior. So it's, with, so it's a win. And then Harrod says, Top words, Josh. So, uh, though, what will you salvage the can't... I'll start again, shall we? Top word, Josh. Though, what will you salvage the Candice warrior and headless white with? I mean, Josh has got a lot of... He's, he's, like, a, he's like the new you. He's got, yeah, he's a, got lot a lot of bits of quite expensive models with a tiny bit cut off, just lying <laughs> abandoned. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to get a relevant Harrod quote in, says Larry. Uh, I quote. can picture Steve quote. approaching his experience, understudies, and telling him about the jam pies <laughs> they'll make. Uh, Larry says, no idea what Sam's doing. Fair enough. Uh, Josh Crosby says, new for you, Damien. You're <laughs> in for a treat at issue 91. Do you know what, Josh? Of all the issues I've looked at, I've actually spent a fair bit of time with 1991 because um, I, I read the terrain articles about how to make things like fields and kennels. <laughs> uh, the banner says, a taste of the Banner White's own medicine. <laughs> and Justin says, well, hello, hey. everyone. My name has been far too long welcome back hey, Justin. Dude, good to see you, mate. you. I hope all's well man. hope you're well hope oh, you're still fiddling fiddler innit yes there you go just was bit I have increasingly more rare models I can sacrifice to save those models <laughs> and that is it mate it's a desperate desperate like slippery slope he's on isn't it? he's like, ends up hacking off um, the Rohan captain with axe and like, oh god what do I do what do I do what do I do uh, so, um, 
thank you to everyone who joined in. Um, yeah. I think I think the net we obviously how it, we we were great. We're up to about forty five people in on midweek, which is which is absolutely amazing. Uh, we had yeah. twenty three people enter. Um, in my soul, I'm a bit disappointed because I thought with a, you know a big push for the Harad, we we might have a chance. But I think I think it was always going to happen with a midweek one that we were never. Yeah. We were never likely to um, to push it, build, as it were. Bills on, mate. Um, but um, thank you to everyone who joined. Um, really inspirational um, Harad stuff we sh- we showed. We're on episode ninety six, and we had uh, what did I say twenty three entries. Lovely stuff. So um, that works out quite nicely. So we're going to have um, an, an eight and a, eight and eight and a seven. Yeah. Uh, so let's take you over to Dice Cam. Just like my Campbell with dice. It's exactly like that. Remember, you are playing for this black battle streams in Middle Earth dice that only rolls threes and fours. Yeah. And if you keep rolling, it keeps going up because here's a five. Stop! Three. Stop rolling right there. <laughs> I told you it only rolls threes. Um, so you can see the bottom. So there you go. That's what we're playing for. So as ever, we will go for our th- our three finalists. So our first group of eight is Richard Clammer, Joe Holzman, Frederick Schultz, Morgan Morris, Tom Christian, Scott Newman, James Wilson, and Sam Huddy. I've got a D8, Steve. Uh, I don't see my curse. Are we ready? Yeah, I'm ready, man. Go for it. It's a six. Six. It's Scott Newman. Ooh. Scott Newman. And uh, It's not a fix. I'm not putting him in just because he sent me the paint recipe. <laughs> You'd love to see it. Uh, we then have Sam Earnshaw, Gary George, Boris Herzog, Chris Cooper, Matt Hudson, Remco Keisha, Ashley Fisher, and Joshua Crosby. Let's just um, remind myself for the for the sake of the tension. Ashley Fisher is on four dice, and it is indeed colours on five. Yeah. Oh, can he challenge for the big numbers? No, not this week. It's Matt Hudson. Matt Hudson. Matt Hudson has made it into the final. Orders. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> just keep ruining everyone's name, don't I? Just, just put hers at the end, it works. We've got Larry Miller, Miller's, Sean Clark, we've got Parkers, <laughs> Covers is in there, Stephen Ryan, Ryan, Ryan is. <laughs> Chris Bellowitz, Bella, Bella uh, is, uh, is Harry Parker or Parkers. Parkers works. Parkers, Schillers. Schillers, I think you uh, Larry Miller. Larry Miller's in there twice. Oh, no. Uh oh. Oh, it's been unfair. Uh, Sod yeah. it, it's too late. Well, you just have to take them out the second one. Yeah, we've got a group of six. Yeah. Oh, the, I, the, and, and Colours, Five Dice Colours is in the group of six. Can you imagine if this happens? Oh. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll a d6. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let the prize dice decide. So Larry Miller, Sean Clark, Ryan Cuthbert, Stephen Ryan, Chris Billowitz, and Harry Parkhill. If this is three, they're going to riot, Steve. Oh, it finally rolls a six. It's Parkshill. <laughs> Colours was on a three. That dice only rolls threes. <laughs> Parkshill has got into the final. So we have, uh, congratulations to our finals. We have Scott Newman, Matt Hudson, and Harry Parkhill. Um, let's have a look. Scott Newman mm. has won a dice. Yeah. Matt Hudson has not won a dice. I don't okay. think Harry's got one, you know. Harry has I, not won I, I don't a dice. Think Harry's got one. Scott Newman is our only player with a dice. I think Matt Hudson and Harry Parkill have just sat up. Yeah. I think they're suddenly very interested with the way things are going to play out. Um, how exciting right let me get our D3 right so here we go are you ready Scott Newman on a 1 Mal mm. Hudson on a 2 Harry Parker on a 3 <sighs> who's your money on I'm going to go Parker Parker do you think it's his time yeah <laughs> 96 episodes in a chance for Hudson Huddest Huddest <laughs> Huddersfield. I'm going for Hudders. On the night he earned his nickname, surely Hudders is going to take the title. 
Scott Newman's on a one. Hudders is on a two. Park Shields on a three. Oh, Scott Newman. Come on, H. That'll that'll show that'll show these pretenders a thing or two. Scott's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> there we go. Oh, 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 two oh, for oh, Newman. Two. Are the others going to get a look in? Are they even sure going to get a look in? Harry Parker and Matt Hudson, they they spent so long dreaming of the final and now they're they're not even they haven't even turned up. Oh he's done it! He's done it! He's it's an absolute walkover. Oh it's an absolute crushing from Newman. The lack oh. of experience. Poor Sean. Hudders. And congratulations, Scott, you're on your second black dice that only rolls fives. Um there we go. That, that's almost that was almost a bit disappointing. We we never get a walkover. No, we never get. I mean, I mean, well done, well done to Scott. I was like waiting up for the uh, Joshua and Ganu final. <laughs> Bang down. <laughs> uh, Scott Newman becomes two wins. He's one on stream fifty three and stream ninety six. Is that right? Mm. Stream prize winners. Uh, was it the eleventh? Uh, eleventh. Third twenty four. The winner Ooh. was Scott Newman. Ugh. The issue was seventy. I'm sorry to the Hudders and Parkhills not even not even get in the get in the game there. Yeah. Larry says, did those issues tell you how to make massive kennels? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, one of them does, yeah. Medog Me sold. Only true B Simons remember, says Frederick. <laughs> Medog sold is good. <laughs> uh, live stream, I was six on the dice roll. Would you believe it, says Scott Newman. What was that? Last stream, not live stream, sorry, my eyes. Last clear. stream, I was six on the dice roll. Was it must have been number six. In the, in, you know, in the, he did, you know what I'm saying? Is he, was he the same number this time? Is that, is that what you're saying? Yeah. He was, yeah. So yeah. yeah. So I see yeah, he's six yeah. this time. So yeah, maybe that's his place, and it's it's worked out for him. Yeah. Larry says, just leave me in there twice. It's fine. Uh, go on, Matt says Sean. Uh, second time in the final oh, says Harry. Shot face. It's the hope that kills you. What does he set up? Says Matt Hudson. <laughs> Parky says the banners. I appreciate the sentiment. Says Sam. Brutal kill Scott. Grats. What does he sat down? <laughs> His experience shot out there. Congrats, Scott. Uh, congrats to the rigged dice. Lol, says Frederick. Congrats, congrats, Scott. What does put the IPA down? Congrats. Scott takes no prisoners. Brutal. Spreadsheet City says banners. I can't just, I can't, I don't want to check yet and I don't want to influence the chat, but something tells me when we go back to the patron chat, there's going to be a new nickname for Matt Hudson. <laughs> Oh, um, cheers, lads. Uh, of course, because Scott won the um, he won the board game that we gave away. That still hasn't come out. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, he won that in two streams, a dice and a board game. I'll take it. What a, he, he, he's the well, player to be. He's the player to be. But of course, well, what will also happen? We must look at the at the wider dice situation. In the um, Cuthers will once more breathe a sigh of relief. Mm. That you know, Cuthers sadly. And this is just the way the, the the big the big the big four view these things. Seeing a player go from one to two dice is exactly what they want. Yeah. You know, they don't want anyone they don't want anyone challenging. So Scott Newman, congratulations. You are one of eleven people in the world to have two black dice. George Galloway remains the only person with three dice. Ashley Fisher, Joe Holzman, and Joshua Crosby all on four dice, and Ryan Colours remains five dice colours. Mm. Parkhill and Hudders, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> and uh, I believe that draws the the formal um, uh, business of the, of the of the meeting to a close. <laughs> any other business? Any other business? Do we have uh, date for the next meeting? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Episode ninety six done, dusted. Um, should we have a look forward to the next issue? Absolutely. And I, I, I teased this earlier. There's a bit of an issue. Yeah. And maybe we won't resolve it tonight, but next issue. Yes. Army of the Dead. Bring it dead. 
the Battle of the Pelennor Fields begins in earnest. I mean, they, they're quite... It's quite literally the case. Like, huh? uh, what, are we, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Ah, sake. <laughs> the Battle of the Pelennor Fields will literally begin in the, in the next stream. Mm. Um, the Army of the Dead fulfil their oath and come to Gondor's aid. So we're obviously going to get an Army of the Dead themed um, issue. And I think the, the cover already looks pretty amazing. Yeah. Nice King of the Dead, nice kind of um, narrative picture down the bottom, which is pretty cool. Uh, the next part of our massive four-player battle report, paint the ghostly King of the Dead. I'm quite excited for that. It could be a genuinely different painting guide on how to paint the Army of the Dead. I think that could be cool. I can't remember. I, can't, I, I genuinely can't remember how they did it. No, I'm, I'm quite excited. Build mm. the final sections. <laughs> build the final sections of the modular Pelada fields to Rabels. Yeah. Like, you... <laughs> here's a list of stuff. Go build it. So if you, if in the last two weeks you've been able to get through this, <laughs> next section we'll, we'll build some more. Um, and you get the Metal King of the Dead figure. Mm. Now, the thinnest sword ever. Oh yeah. Oh no, Thor. Thor wins that surely. Mm. Um, now, Steve. Yeah. Do you know what I'm about to say? You're going to ask me what's eligible. Uh, no, I wasn't going to ask you. Oh, that. I, I think yeah. what's eligible for this one should be pretty. Easy. I think we just say Dead or Done Harrow, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes and no. Oh, here's here's oh, here's oh. here's my thought on it. Oh, God, life. Yes, if you want low, like, you know, we couldn't count it towards winning. But if we just said King of the Dead, plastic or metal, could be, possibly. What you want to give him the chance to? You think he could Maybe. win the? I don't think he would. I don't think he'd beat Aragorn, but. Oh, I don't know. It's up to. You. I, I don't it, mind. It's the, the they're not in, they're not in the they don't we don't get them again, do we? No. no I'll just do any 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 um, any army that does. <laughs> he just caved right in. No, I don't. Yeah. I, even I don't want it. I I think yeah. that's the right call, personally. I think it should be Army of the Dead Week. So that would yeah. allow the King of the Dead, and the Heralds, the Old Metal King of the Dead, the war, the Plastic Warriors, the Metal Warriors, and the Riders. Yeah. Mm. But this is where I'm going to test my friendship. Yeah. I've been quite excited about this week. What was I going to do on the stream? When. For this one, for Army of the Dead Week, I've told you publicly. Uh, Come on, use your mouth, brain. Oh, that's so hurtful. The new plastic, the plastic uh, thingy man, Bannerman, Bannerman dude. <laughs> what? Plastic king, king at dead. Yeah, what about which ones? Plastic one. You never listen to me. I hate you. Um, <laughs> I said. I was gonna do the the translucent ones, the new ones that came out. That's what I said. Yeah. Is that what you said? Wait, sorry, when <laughs> you said sorry. the new plastic King of the Dead, you meant assemble translucent warriors of the dead. I, yeah, I, yeah. I can see it all now. I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was gonna try. Well, it. all right. Let me put it another way. Yeah. I didn't not say it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I I said I was gonna try and assemble them in a night. Put them on black yeah, yeah. bases. Put cotton wool on the bases. And da da, like yeah. get them done. Clear the backlog, right? Yeah, they haven't arrived. Uh, uh, that seems to be the running theme in the chat. I haven't got them. Are, mm. we, are you saying so? My translucent dead haven't arrived. Will my clear army the dead arrive in time? Now we did this once for the Witch King. No, was it for Aemar? We delayed one. So here's my one, question. Yeah. Do we delay this issue? To what end, Damien? So that everyone... Because there's going to be a point. I reckon they're probably they're probably making them all now. Yeah. Because they're probably then going to post out loads of them. There's going to be a point where some Middle-earth people who watch the stream get a load of Army of the Dead mm. and are quite excited about Army of the Dead. Yeah. And But... I, Listen, I'm I, I'm just going to be devil's advocate, and I don't mind either way. But what I would say is, mm. I reckon there's a lot of people who've got Army of the Dead anyway, translucent or not. Do you know what I mean? I do know what you mean because you've explained it very clearly. 
Is it? Is it mad? I get it. If you want, if you want, a, if you want an episode where we celebrate those, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what if? Fine. What if? Because God knows we're not getting specials for anything else. How about we get the mm. best of both worlds, just like Hannah wanted? Mm. And next week or next stream, King of the Dead week, mm. like you wanted, and then as and when the translucent Army of the Dead start to arrive, mm. we do another week where we focus on Army of the Dead week. How about that? There'll be no magazines go through them. No, but we could do something else. I'll um I'll do a deep dive. I'll do a deep dive on the Army of the Dead. Okay. That'll be fun. Mm. <laughs> just, have you read the last comment? I just seen it pop up. As well. <laughs> <laughs> so his test of Steve's friendship is not going to play. Uh, um, yeah, don't test friendship on on knowledge. I'll fail every time. I think we do that because yeah, if we because we don't know if it was if we knew they were going to come out next month, we could delay it or swap one. But they might be. It's 180 days. I think they mm. were released in December. Which still potentially gives us some avenues for them to come out in like April, May, maybe even June. I don't know. So I mean, about, I mean the, the, the other that. thing is we don't know when the next stream is. <laughs> it might be in June. It could. It could be. <laughs> no, it won't be June. But it could. It could it be. It could have all week. come out. Yeah, yeah. Because let's be clear, we could. So all, let's play it by ear. Yeah, we could I'd all say. get our get our emails tomorrow, and they could yes. start to flood out or something. Yeah. yeah. But um, I think let's do, I think that's a good way forward. Let's assume that they don't come out. Yeah, yeah. And then the next one is King of the Dead week. Yeah. Um, plastic or metal King of the Dead, or translucent if you've been lucky enough to get hold of one. Um, and then let's assume that they haven't come out in the next few weeks. And then we'll we'll do we'll return to the Army of the Dead. Um, I'll do some deep dives. That's a that's a great thing to do a deep dive on because it's it's such a small section. Um, mm. it, that'll be quite good fun, and then we'll do when when as and when they arrive, and maybe we'll give it. They, they should all. I, I reckon they'll all arrive together now, won't they? You know what I mean. They made once yeah, they make them made to all, all, all together, together yeah. Together. And we'll leave it like I don't know a a um a month after they come out or something, and then do do a special for the Army of the Dead. How about that? Never know. It might end up being the theme for episode one hundred. Okay. I think that's the way forward. Um, let's see what the chat are saying. Um, R.I.P. Hudders, Jill Monroe. Thanks for another fun stream. <laughs> Matt Hudson, Parkinson, Hudders defeated. Thanks for the stream chats. Um, and the banner said he's sick of the Army of the Dead. Well, you're not going to enjoy the next few streams. Uh, Frederick Schultz, Plastic King of the Dead counts. Oh, okay, all dead count, all right. Richard Clammer, my translucent dead haven't arrived. Banner says, Barrel White. Uh, Larry Miller says, real question is, yeah, so will they arrive? Uh, I think the banners is just naming ghosts at this stage. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Larry Miller says, King of the Dead, not worthy of a stream. Um, I think he, I think he might get a stream. I think Steve wanted him to have a stream. I think we should we should always try and keep Steve happy. Joshua Crosby, just, damn it, just found lots of spare bayoning axes I could have used <laughs> instead of carving up some sort of rare canned king, I think. When will I learn? The banners, Rohan man painted like Army of the Dead. No. Mm -hmm. um, Matt Hudson, I'm still waiting for mine too. Um, Sean Clark, we could postpone the next issue for a Kellerboard. I feel like maybe that's issue 100. Give Kellerboard his, his moment <laughs> in the sun. That would be great. Well, I've, I've got an armoured Kellerboard I haven't painted. That could be quite tempting. Me too. Oh, there we go. Maybe that that feels quite fitting. Four and a half years of people waiting to paint Kellerboard, you know. Uh, the banners. Will you do an expansion new book week if it comes out before night one? Yeah, yeah, obviously, obviously, we'll do a special for the new supplement. Um, Joshua Crosby, that's a great comment. David's test of Steve's friendship isn't going to plan. Sean Williams says, "Evening, lads. Evening. Bye." Um, <laughs> nice of you to drop in, man. Uh, Richard Clamber. The only problem with delaying this one is a made to order, not a release date. So basically, time delay is arbitrary. Yeah, or at least just when day. Because yeah, I make the rules. Once I've got mine, sod the rest of you. Virtual, uh, don't really care. Mind if you delay the stream for the people who order Transparent Dead. Would also be okay if you did a Transparent Special later. The banner suggests Pookle Men Week. We do get that. We get uh, we get Garnbury Gun. Mm -hmm. uh, Steve doesn't seem thrilled. He's all right. Uh, virtual. <laughs> Steve's very tired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Feels like we haven't had a proper deep dive in a while. Yeah, it's true. They're just a, a, I am quite busy. But B, if you look back through the last few things, there's, it's been like War Riders. Yeah, Riders yeah, of Rohan. There's not been too much that kind of 
So it really, I don't know, grabbed me and made me want to do it. Stephen Ryan, anything that puts off the rapidly approaching end to the magazine is right by me. Oh, listen, it, it sounds, when we're going over 75%, we've still got a long way to go. We've still about two years. At least a year. Yeah. <laughs> At least. All right, all right. Uh, Entmu Video says, hold off. Who are we to deny the wishes of Harry Parkill? Um, the two... Richard Clamour, the two-part bat rep is never going to happen. Is that Does that mean the next two issues, like we're saying? I think we're right. I think because we're going to go ahead with the next issue next time. I think we're right. Scott Newman, King of the Dead Week, do a dive on him and Battle of Pelena. Do a dive on the Battle of the Pelena. Well, it's not actually that long. Who knows? Maybe. And Week of Dead and Unharrow, do a deep dive on the Dead and Unharrow. <laughs> it's just like Scott Newman, deep dive, deep dive. Just do, just do it all, mate. Do it all. Can't just all, deep dive all the can't all just be there winning <laughs> dice and baking, Scott. You know, I've got I've got stuff on, mate. Uh, the vans, it's fine, Stephen. After what, not even just go back to one, but do a speed run. Um, he ain't afraid of no ghost. Army of the Dead painted like Rohan. <laughs> yes, I think we'd have to allow that. Oh, Matt Davis could get his army the living in, couldn't he? Yeah. God, they were good. Um, Sam says, will you do a special for the new book? Yeah, anything to delay for the Army of the Dead to arrive. Sean Clark, dare we dream? What's he dreaming of? I don't know. Banners is Spartacus. And Richard Clemens says, the next two issues are the bat rep. Aren't we skipping to the end of the bat rep? Yeah, we will be if we skip. I think that's what he meant. Yes. So we'll yeah, skip yeah, the issue. Yeah, we're gonna, yeah. Well, so we won't, we won't we're going to miss the start. Yeah. We won't, we won't skip the issue because we'll, we'll, do, we'll do King of the Dead week. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if you, you can prep your Kings of the Dead and he will definitely, definitely be allowed in the next stream. It's whether or not his minions will be allowed. Um, I, I think we're going to be doing King of the Dead week. Um, mm. But hopefully not. Hopefully we'll all get a lovely email about a dispatch tomorrow and and some clear worries of the dead will start to arrive. Uh, but that way we can keep keep going in a sensible order as well. And we get we get a bonus stream out of it, which I think is all for the good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's it. Have we got anything we want to add? I just want to say how much fun it's been as ever, Steve. It's been yeah, it's been a month. Been it's been a, it's, it's been, been nice not to uh, not to like think about work and stuff. I, I agree nice. entirely. I am. I, I didn't really talk about this because we obviously caught up. You, you've had such an exciting career change, but I've been. I'm really. I, I don't want to say I'm miserable at work. That might be. That might be overstating it. But I'm having a really tough time at work at the moment. Really, 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 really tough. It's really hard, and I've got a lot on that's coming home with me in the evening. And mm. there is something about doing this where you constantly talk for three hours about hobby stuff that you don't have a chance to think about it. And it really. I do mean it this gives me escape from the real world in a way that literally coming home on most evenings and just being at home doesn't because I'm still thinking yeah. about well, what's happening tomorrow. The, the distraction this gives me to stop me thinking about the other stuff is mm. a blessed, blessed relief. So um, thank you, Steve, for doing it. And thank you to all of our wonderful um, supporters, whether you're a patron and the, the wonderful chats we have in the weeks to come or whether you're just somebody who joins in for the stream. Um, it, it's awesome that, again, we had... 45 people in today all painting along with Farad and having fun with us and mm. I've, I've had an absolute blast so um, it's chicken soup to the soul for me and I really do appreciate um, I totally agree it's like, it, it's like a little pause button for life for a few yeah. hours once a couple of weeks yeah, yeah it's, it's like a it's like a cheat code where you've gone down one of the pipes from Mario isn't it into the, yeah. the happy land it's like <laughs> Found the, found the, the, horror, the horror stopped at 9am <laughs> at 9pm and then it'll start again it starts you know when we go off and you start thinking about the next yeah. day or whatever but um, for those three hours it's just it's just wonderful and I, I love these so much and hanging out with you guys and um, it's just it's just awesome uh, yeah, Sam is good. suggesting that I have some jam, some jam pie and chill <laughs> do you think jam <laughs> is jam pie and chill is that sex of some sort do you think jam pie does not sound good jam man. pie and chill sounds jam pie oh, that's jam actually pie. a phrase oh. I haven't heard in a very long time that would be a <laughs> horrific um, turn of events uh, Harry says really enjoyed this evening gents thanks for the company thank you my friend uh, round of applause from the banners woo that's good and Jim Monroe life isn't great right now and uh, the streams are the perfect self I am um, I'm sorry to hear that, and I'm glad to hear that streams can offer you some respite. They certainly do it for me. It's great to have you, Jill, by the way. Always is. Um, have you in. So uh, I hope for yourself as well as a little, little respite from... And don't forget, Jill. From whatever's we, going on. We and everyone else here know where you live. Yeah. Because yeah. of Steve. Anyone who doesn't, drop me a PM. I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, midnight on uh, Tuesdays yeah, that's, yeah, that's how we roll. We're, we're rock and roll, man. We, we can stuff as late as we want. Yeah, do uh, want. Jim Monroe puts uh, a terrifying thing that says jam pie may be sex, but you probably don't want to stick something into it. Well, quite. Uh, jam <laughs> pie is whatever you want it to be. <laughs> Everyone's on with Jam pie and chill is what hot boys and hot girls are on there. Oh, amazing <laughs> stuff. Amazing stuff. Um, um, next stream, we'll keep you posted, guys. Um, I'll, I'll have a look at my schedule this coming week um, and see what's what. We've got, it's going to be, it's going to be, it might, yeah, it's probably going to be a Sunday or a Tuesday because I've got yeah. scouring coming up, so I have to take that into account. I, I think that's that's a safe bet that at the moment, think think how many times we think we started off monthly we then went to weekly during lockdown. We then went to fortnightly on different days. And we started off on Sundays. We went to Fridays during lockdown. And I think what you're seeing at the moment is we are settling on Sundays and Tuesdays. So in terms of, you know, not, not every one, but that's, that's the, that's the mm. day to try and, um, yeah, keep clear. But, I guess. but fear not, that's not like set in stone. That's how it's going to be because I do love a Friday or a Saturday night stream. And we will get we will get the odd one. Don't worry. I think we have we we've said this, and I'm saying it on here. I'm gonna hold, we have to do it for a hundred. Yeah. Oh, without a hundred yeah. has to be a weekend stream. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. A big party yeah. party. Yeah. Um, as and when we get it. Oh, Jill said such a comfort to me. Thanks. Lovely. Keep um, up. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Aziz Lima Crazy's joined us. So almost 25 years of MSBG still kicking. Thank you for joining, sir. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we'll see you on the next stream. We will announce it on the Battle Streams in Middle Earth Facebook page. We do have a Facebook page, by the way, for anyone who doesn't know. Um, and we'll announce it as, as and when we know in the in the patron group, probably before anything else. So yeah, we'll see you then. Anything else to add, Damien? Um, no, I just I, I, <laughs> I wanted to do it was I suddenly realised um, I I wanted to see how how much our our viewership had, had soared since you know the the heady days. Um, <laughs> you know we crossed fifteen hundred subscribers. Yeah, on the yeah, last yeah. Year we had a party popper and that was a month ago. Do you know how many we got now? I don't get it. It's like we're race. both freaking awesome, so it doesn't <laughs> make any sense. <laughs> um, yeah. It's so funny. It's Great. so funny. We'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. By the time we get to, you know, issue... This, this will be our job one day. Issue 440 will be on 2,000 subscribers. <laughs> hey, I blab my way to being a chef. We can make... We can blag this to be a career <laughs> shop. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we wouldn't want Harry, to middle Harry's put, talk about toy soldiers. Yeah, Harry's put the threat out there that I think everyone's worried about. I can only assume you'll get to ninety nine and then never do one again. Imagine. I think, Imagine. I think, I think we're gonna to get to hundred. In a way in a way. <laughs> Don't it would, in a way. <laughs> in a way like it would be it on theme. End? Yeah, wouldn't it <laughs> like it to end on ninety nine? But we wouldn't even announce it at the end of episode 99. We'd be like, right, see you next week. Well, that's, that's it. I mean, and I've said this a hundred times before. That's what the plan to was. It wasn't meant to end on 99. We were meant to record 100 two weeks later. We just didn't. Yeah. I think we'll get to 100. No, we'll nail it. We'll nail it. I think we'll go beyond. Yeah, yeah. I hope so. Get to 100. They go, we made it. Stop. I think we'll go beyond. We did. We, we have always said, uh, you know, we'll go to, go to the source books and things like that and go through the journey books so there's plenty there's plenty of content out there and between and like like we say just with the magazines and and the the way we're streaming at the moment there's at least a year left yeah just in the magazines yeah, so you know yeah we're laughing. easily easily hey going nowhere you stuck with us unfortunately apologize about that but you know it's what it is. steve there is no one i would rather be stuck with cheers mate namaste namaste <laughs> I think right. On that lovely, that lovely Let's note, we'll say thank you all. We love you all. Uh, we look forward to um, seeing you all in the Patreon chat and elsewhere. Um, stay safe, and hopefully by our next stream, I reckon by our next stream we'll have something. I, I really do. I think there's going to be a blog article in the next couple of weeks that will give mm -hmm. us something, um, some timeline, and we might have a bit of news, which will be quite exciting. So keep the faith. Yeah. 
Yeah, man. Um, and anyone who is Footloose and Fans Free and wants to jump onto Scouring, there is a few places. Aaron um, has dropped out. For the third time, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you, Aaron, if you're still here for a couple of couple of days, because you've changed your mind about six times. But there is a couple of spots uh, for anyone who fancies coming along and having a cracking weekend. Uh, just go and have a look at the uh, event page. But other than that, that's it. Thanks for joining us, guys. No, You've got to turn it off. Remember, I know. I always forget. Uh, you're there, lad. Mute end stream, isn't it? And hold <laughs> yeah. screen. All right, let's see what happens. Nighty night. I go, I go hold screen end stream. When when do you mute though? You can mute as soon as you go on hold screen. So but then you've got to wait. Screen or hold screen. Wait mute. for YouTube to catch up and then end stream. But mute hold screen or hold screen mute. Yeah, yeah, mute. Yeah, mute, we should yeah. discuss we'll this before we do. Anyway, so. All right, cool. I'm gonna Later. I'm gonna 